guys, all familiar names. So all these names who make an impression in T20 or wherever, you see the T20 World Cup, the think tank is such that you'll still go back to the regulars and you won't find too many of these names making it to the World Cup team. Now, in a, in a match where 465 runs were scored, it's very difficult to talk about the bowlers. But uh, coming to you, uh, Yathart, the way, you know, the De Delhi spinners bowled, particularly Kuldeep Yadav taking four wickets. Absolutely. Give night. it to him. See, because he came and he removed the top three. I mean, you have to give it to him because at that time, every bowler was getting the stick. Imagine first over goes for 19 runs. Thereafter, every, I mean, the next five overs, each of those next five overs go for 20 or 20 plus. Mm -hmm. So thereafter, when he comes to bowl, he puts the brakes immediately. So right. a lot of credit is due to Kuldeep first and then Akshar. Right. So, you know, right. those eight overs made a difference? Clearly, yeah. Let me also take that question to Yathart. Um, you know, your impression of the two bowlers uh, who came in in the middle overs, Kuldeep Yadav and Akshar Patel, picking up those five wickets, because at one stage, it looked like SRH could even score 300 runs. Exactly. I mean, just the way uh, Sir mentioned, I would just like to continue from there. Uh, because the Kuldeep Yadav, the way he came, he immediately applied breaks and removing top three, uh, including the wicket of Abhishek, Head and, you know, Klasin. So, that would have been uh, Makram. So, that would have been the biggest plus. And the way Akshar Patel came in and sees the flow of runs, he just, you know, cut off all the boundary options for uh, Sunrise Hyderabad. So, in the middle phase, you know, uh, the spinners, the way they controlled about the game was the uh, turning point. And at that point, probably the hopes are coming out that if we can restrict them under 240, or 250 because court lies a very small ground so mm -hmm. you can actually uh, you know have a go about this target but the way Kuldeep Padav turns around this table he spins around a magician we know, all know whatever tricks he has in his bags and the way he just spin around the batters it was just amazing to watch out for and that has been the biggest positive from the last night because there were hardly a few issues you can name except the power play and the batting and bowling was one of those. Also, uh, Dharma, uh, the, the way Delhi had begun, uh, they were ahead in the chase uh, uh, in terms of, and they were ne never, they were behind the asking rate in the beginning, but some skillful bowling by Tina Trajan and Reddy actually got them in back into the game and thereby they sealed that 67 run win. Would you say with these bowlers performing, a lot of credit really goes to Pat Cummins uh, in the way he is shepherding the pack? Um, yes, ma'am. You know, the way uh, Pat Cummins is going to the bowlers, Nattu and, you know, NKR and giving um, the strength to, uh, to them to perform is what all, you know, we, we can expect from the good captain. And, you know, uh, Natanjam picking four wickets and NKR picking two wickets and uh, Bhuvanesho one wicket that which uh, we got one in the first over itself made uh, a huge difference in the game. Just last one word, Rakesh, on Pat Cummins. Would you say that he has really come of age in T20 cricket and this gentleman is now looking ahead to, um, you know, doing some dhamaka in the T20 World Cup as well? Why not? I mean, just look at the kind of confidence he has. The results show that he has truly arrived as the skipper. But in case of SRH, when you look at him, he doesn't have to do so much because when he comes with his captaincy skills, already 250 plus runs are already on the board. So I'm not trading too much into his skills when you have to defend in, you know, like anything in excess of 250. But yes, talking about him as a, as a, as a full grown cricketer, as a guy who is high on confidence because his team is, you know, giving him what he wants. So a captain is as good as a team. And of course, the way he has, you know, like led Australia, it's absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much, Rakesh, Dharma and Yatharth for joining us on the broadcast this morning. Time now for a quick break on the show. We're on the other side. Stay tuned. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Agni 
Kheli tradition performed across South India where devotees throw burning palm fronds at each other as a part of the annual festival of Agni Kheli. Hello everyone, I urge each one of you to exercise your right to vote. Your voice matters and all our votes shape our collective future. <laughs> Let us make democracy stronger by going out and exercising our franchise. Jai Hind! Sabha elections. As always, NDTV has its ear to the ground. With the biggest pie of 80 seats, all eyes will be on Uttar Pradesh. Will the Troika ensure the most? This is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello, Moto. Hello and welcome. You are watching NDTV. I'm Arthi Krishna. Let's take a look at the top headlines. Mega India Block Rally in Jharkhand today. U Ugulan Nyai Rally in Rachi ahead of the second phase of elections. Repolling in 11 polling stations in Inner Manipur after violence in the first phase of elections. Tragic accident in Rajasthan's Jalawar, nine dead in a van and trolley collusion. Passengers were returning from a wedding in Madhya Pradesh. Severe heatwave rips India above 43 degrees Celsius temperature in 14 cities. Odisha's Booth and Badipara record maximum temperatures at 45.2 degrees Celsius. Maldives elections today, litmus test of Muizu and his pro-China policy. Big question is, can President Muizu secure his tenure? A night of records in Delhi's fourth 465 runs scored. Hyderabad gets the better of the capitals in a high-octane contest. Leaps to the second position on the league table. Now the India bloc is holding a mega rally today. Leaders from 14 political parties including Malik Arjun Kharge, Rahul Gandhi, Lalu Prasad Yadav, Farooq Abdullah, Akhilesh Yadav and Sunita Kejriwal, who the of Delhi CM Arvind Kejriwal, are likely to join the opposition's India bloc Ulgulan Nyai rally. Now, this rally is going to be led by the JMM and will be held in Jharkhand's capital, Ranchi. I have my colleague Prabhakar joining us with more details. Prabhakar, Take us through what we can expect from the rally today. This is a mega India bloc rally. Most of the top opposition leaders are going to be present. Yeah, this is what is expected. And uh, this rally is to be held at the uh, Tara Maidan in Ranchi. Uh, today it's being hosted by uh, the JMM uh, as a political party. And Champai Swaran would be, obviously, he'll be uh, hosting this rally. And the senior leaders of uh, uh, India Alliance, uh, and they're all supposed to be there, right from Malika Arun Kharge to Tejasvi Yadav to Akhilesh Yadav uh, and, and, and uh, Bhagwan Man, who happens to be the Chief Minister of Punjab. Also, Sunita Kejriwal, she might also be there at today's rally. The names who are, who are, who are, who are not very sure about uh, being there are uh, Laluk Shad Yadav. He probably would skip the rally, but his son Tejasvi Yadav would certainly be there. And, and also, uh, Rahul Gandhi's program, as of now, is 
tentative. So we have been told that Rahul Gandhi has several other lab he signed up, especially in Madhya Pradesh. So he actually might give it a skip. But as far as uh, the party president, Malik Arjun Kharge, is concerned, he is uh, supposed to be uh, there. So this rally would be held at the Prabhat Tara Maidan today, and it would be a show of strength. And as Jharkhand goes to poll uh, in the in the last three phases of election, so this would be an important uh, uh, political event in, in the alliance is putting up in Ranchi. Right. Thank you, Prabhakar, for joining us and bringing us those updates. Shifting focus now, Union Home Minister Ramit Shah will campaign in Darjeeling today for BJP MP uh, Raju Bista, who has uh, repeated as the candidate from the seat. Amit Shah will address a rally at the Gorkha Stadium in Lebong near Darjeeling. Last time, Raju Bista had won with the largest margin in Bengal, with him being ahead of the runner-up by more than 4 lakh votes. This time, the TMC has fielded Gopal Lama, local face, while the Congress has fielded Delhi University professor Munish Tamang. And Darjeeling is a unique looks of a constituency, remember, as it includes assembly segments of the Darjeeling Hills and Siliguri and Terai region in the plains and the foothills. I have my colleague Saurabh joining us with more details. Saurabh, now interesting contest in Darjeeling. Amit Shah also going to be there to campaign. Take us through what we can expect. Well, you know, Darjeeling is, of course, like you said, a very uh, unique seat. And it's a unique seat because, you know, the demography in the plains and the demography in the hills is different. The sentiments are different. The viewpoints of voters are different. And therefore, it's a very strong and very difficult balancing act to pull off this constituency. Now, usually, the parties that are in power in Bengal have had a challenge in winning this seat for the last few years. The BJP has been able to win for the last several years. People like Jaswan Singh, people like SS Aluwalia have been MPs from Darjeeling. Now today, of course, Amit Shah is going to campaign for Raju Bista at this public meeting at the Gorkha Stadium in Lebong. Uh, Lebong also has a, a helipad and, uh, you know, also it's, it, it is around Darjeeling town, just about 8 kilometers from, uh, you know, uh, Darjeeling 8 to 10 kilometers from Darjeeling. And Obviously, uh, this is very much in the Darjeeling Hills. And it's a very picturesque place. If, uh, if it weren't for the little bit of fog around, I would have shown you a little bit of the space as well. But uh, Amit Shah's campaign today here is primarily for Raju Bista. And Raju Bista has the unique record of winning this seat by a margin of over 4 lakh votes in 2019. But this time around, there was some doubt whether he would get the ticket because there was at least in the minds of several people, another contender, uh, you know, former Foreign Secretary Harshvardhan Shringla. But eventually the party decided to go with Raju Bista, given his, uh, you know, massive win in 2019, over 4 lakh votes. But this time the TMC says that they are silently working in the hills and perhaps Mr. Bista will not be able to pull off the kind of margin he won from the Darjeeling Hills. And the Trinamool wants to make up in the plains and the Darjeeling Hills to try and recover this seat, though it is a very, very challenging and difficult task to do so for the Trinamool Congress here. But Raju Bista, of course, has the advantage of also being the party at the center. And that's important because in Darjeeling, there are several issues that can be resolved by the center as well. And therefore, when I asked him about the Gorkhaland sentiment, and that's very strong in the Darjeeling Hills, you cannot include, uh, you cannot exclude the Gorkhaland sentiment as far as the Darjeeling Hills is concerned. So that's why it's very important. And Raju Bista, of course, has managed to uh, win by four lakh votes. This time he's hoping that his margin remains around the same, though uh, many in the Trinamool say that his margin will at least go down even uh, uh, by a significant number. But it's an interesting contest with Union Home Minister Amit Shah himself stepping in and campaigning in this seat, which has so far been a BJP seat in this area. And that is why he will, of course, try and win this seat from here, the BJP. And Raju Bista, of course, will be here. And Amit Shah will campaign for him today. Right, thank you, Saurabh, for joining us and bringing us those details. Continue tracking the story as it develops. Now, the Election Commission has ordered re-polling in 11 booths of the Inner Manipur seat a day after incidents of violence were reported from various polling stations in the constituency in the first of the seven-phase Lok Sabha elections. The re-polling is set to take place tomorrow from 7 a.m. to 5 p.m. according to the official order. My colleague Ratadeep brings us this report.
Election Commission of India last evening in a notification has ordered fresh repolling in 11 polling stations under Inner Manipur constituency which went to polls on April 19th. Remember there have been incidents of sporadic violence, uh, EVMs have been uh, vandalized in several uh, polling stations. In fact, Congress uh, was the first party to go to the uh, uh, election commission with complaints asking for uh, repolling uh, in as many as uh, 40 uh, polling stations. In fact, uh, we did speak last evening uh, to the chief electoral officer of Manipur, Mr. P.K. Jha, who categorically said that three candidates have lost separate complaints and then uh, reports were asked from the returning officers. In fact, on the day of the polling, there were several videos which went viral where one could see uh, that uh, armed people had fired near a polling station. Uh, that created chaos. There were also visuals where one could see uh, an EVM being uh, damaged by supporters of a political party uh, in front of security personnel. There were allegations of proxy voting by armed people. There were allegations of uh, agents of political parties being uh, driven out of polling stations uh, by armed uh, people. So uh, this despite um, uh, massive security arrangements. Remember 160 companies of central forces were rushed to Manipur only to conduct uh, uh, free and fair elections uh, given the fact that the state is limping back from last year's massive ethnic uh, strife, ethnic violence that had left over 200 dead. Uh, now uh, these uh, 11 polling stations where the poll has been ordered are across five constituencies of inner Manipur seat where there is a uh, uh, tough fight between Congress and the ruling BJP and therefore what we are picking up from uh, EC sources is that uh, in this uh, 11 polling station now massive security arrangement would be made, central forces will be manning all the layers of security there and therefore this repolling is going to take place on April 22nd. NDTV's Mara Shakil spoke to top economist Surjit Bala about the Lok Sabha elections and what to expect. He predicts BJP could win over five seats in Tamil Nadu and as for BJP's 400 crossing mission, Bala says there's a possibility that BJP could win only 300 to 350 seats, but that's a feat and he also says the opposition has not done much and more jobs were created in the last five years. Listen in. Uh, so, if the BJP has maxed in central India and northern India, so where are these additional 23, 25 or 35 seats coming from? Okay, this is also an important question. The argument, and that also is discussed well in the book. The argument is, okay, look, they maxed out, then isn't it very likely that they will lose some, let alone gain some? Look at the margins. They had very comfortable margins in North India, 30%, 40%, etc. So they can lose some of the margin, but they're not going to lose a seat. It's very unlikely that they will lose a seat. Second, where are they going to gain in North? Now that's a, you know, UP, etc. If you look at the state elections, there is room to grow for the BJP yeah. in North India by looking at the election results of the states. Yes. As I said, that the weighted average gain in terms of vote share for the BJP in the state elections is about 5%. That's not small. So therefore, they can. Now, what the BJP also understands, well, more than I do, more than you do, so they understand it very well, they need to make forays outside of North India. Hmm. And South India is their major, major target. Yes. Karnataka, they are pretty much maxed out. Yes, as 25 far as seats. Yeah. So it's Tamil Nadu is a think, big one. Do you think Tamil Nadu? No, I, I've been watching as a, as a, as a, as, observer. as a political nut or whatever you want to call it. I've been following the Tamil Nadu election very, very closely. Um, and both from the opposition side as well as from the PM Modi side. And I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised hmm. if in Tamil Nadu, hmm. of all places, hmm. they gain somewhere between five plus seats, the BJP, from zero. So you're saying Tamil Nadu, there's a possibility of five seats? At least. Five plus? Yes. Five plus in Tamil Nadu, okay. Kerala, and maybe one or two. You're still, you're of the opinion that the BJP is opening its account in Kerala? In Karnataka. Kerala. 
in Kerala, maybe one. I mean, but that, that won't make much difference, maybe two. You know, it's very hard. Uh, my analysis in this book is not really at the ground level. If I were doing it now, I would do the ground level type of analysis and questions, etc. We'll continue tracking these stories for you. For now, we take a short break. In our country, we choose our leaders, we decide who is going to be ruling the country, uh, and it is something which is both a fantastic right, privilege, and we should also see it as our constitutional duty. So this election, I am going to be there, and I hope you all will join me in casting your vote too. I do hope all of you are going to go out and cast your vote, and especially the youth of the country. And the youth and the corporate citizens, people who work in our urban centers and uh, companies. You know, we are the, uh, you know, in many ways, we actually are the generation which is going to build the country. So I do hope all of you get out and vote. It is not just our uh, responsibility, but it's also our core participation in building the future country of our dreams. And I am today pledging to vote. Uh, my vote is in Punjab uh, on 1st June, so I'm, I'm pledging here to vote and I do hope all of you do the same. So uh, I'm going to just sign this pledge to vote. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav, only on NDTV 24-7. Less than a year after his election as the president of Maldives, incumbent Mohamed Muizu will face his major political test in today's parliamentary elections that will determine the extent of his control over the parliament or the people's much less. The election will be held in 93 seats in total and the opposition party, Maldivian Democratic Party, with 41 seats in hand, currently dominates the people's much less. A total of 2,84,663 registered voters will be polling at 602 stations nationwide to elect their leaders. I have my colleague Ghazali joining us with more details. Ghazali, take us to what we can expect from these elections in the Maldives. A big uh, battle ahead for Moizu. Yeah, this is uh, what experts believe is going to be the test of anti-India policy of President Moizu. President Moizu came to power by overthrowing President Ibrahim Solihi last year in September. Now, the big battle is between Moizu's party and MDP, which is the party of the former President Mr. Ibrahim Solihi. And it is uh, a test of big anti-India plank which has been following Moizu, is following in his politics. And we saw that how he... Uh, he, he sort of carried out the campaign of India out with Indian troops being asked to leave Maldives and this has seen a lot of uh, outcry by the opposition parties there uh, in, in the Maldivian politics and what India believes is that MDP, the chief opposition party, uh, sorry the one which has the majority in the state parliament there in the Maldivian parliament. Uh, is expected to win. What India will believe that they should win because despite have being the president, uh, Mr. Moizu doesn't have majority in the parliament and, that, and, and his party faces a lot of problems in passing major legislations. And in the last few weeks, Mr. Moizu has been facing accusations of financial frauds. Financial intelligence unit in the country has published many reports and those reports have been accessed by the, uh, the MDP, the, the, one of the parties which is fighting this election, saying that how Moizu has been accused of financial irregularities, though uh, the findings of the reports are not being discussed by Moizu. So as of now, the entire focus will be to see whether Moizu is the president, his party manages to retain majority in the parliament or not. Of all the 93 constituency which goes to polls, we'll have to see that how many candidates from Moizu's party manage to win this poll. Right, uh, thank you, Ghazali, for joining us. Continue tracking the story as it develops. 
In a horrifying incident, a pregnant woman in Punjab was set on fire allegedly by her husband after an argument. The 23-year-old woman, who was six months pregnant, died on the spot. Police are saying the couple had a heated argument, after which the man tied his wife, who was expecting twins, to a bed and set her on fire in a fit of rage. The accused has been arrested in the case. Meanwhile, the National Commission for Women has sought a detailed report from the Punjab police in three days. Listen into what the police have to say. कोर्ट में ताबड़ी से आठ तो नरेश राती कर लिया सीखा आज जिन्हों कोर्ट दे बच्चे पेश कर देता है कोर्ट लोग जा दो दिन दार मारना सोमवार दोबारा पेश करेंगे कोर्ट कहा था जो चल रही है इन्वेस्टिगेशन आज जिन्हों कोर्ट से पेश की था इन्वेस्टिगेशन जारी है दो दिन में तो पता लग जाएगा कि जो जो है � I have my colleague Gurpreet joining us with more details. Gurpreet, shocking incident from Punjab where a woman who was pregnant with twins has been set on fire by her husband. Well, yes, uh, we have seen the police have already claimed they have arrested her husband and uh, they have already got remand of uh, uh, that accused for the two days so that they will be able to find out the exact cause of uh, and the exact motive behind this uh, murder which has been taken place. And specifically, he had set on a fire or uh, set on fire. And after that, we have seen he was running away and police conducted a multiple raid to nab uh, the uh, husband of uh, the deceased. Now, what we have learned from the investigators in the initial investigation, it was learned they were having a heated argument, and so many times the deceased has already reported this matter to her parents also because she was not getting proper treatment from her husband. And recently, uh, and specifically before the murder, what we have learned from the investigator, they say uh, they had a heated argument because uh, her husband he was working as a laborer, but he. He was not joining any work for the last so many days on this issue there was a heated argument and that argument had been exchanged between both the husband and wife and finally uh, he had committed this heinous crime now let's see what will outcome of this police investigation but as of now it seems on the petty issue this incident had taken place and the police say the remand of this accused have already been taken from the local court and now they are going to interrogate and question to find out exact motive behind this murder right thank you for joining us and bringing us those details good people Shifting focus now to Rajasthan, a major accident has taken place as a collision took place between a van and a trolley. A family was returning from a wedding in Madhya Pradesh. Ten passengers were in the van and nine of them have died in the accident which took place in Jalawar in Rajasthan. The driver has been arrested uh, is what we're learning. Remember earlier he was absconding but now we're learning that the driver has been arrested. This collision has taken place in in Jalawar in Rajasthan. A family of 10 were, were uh, returning from a wedding which took place in Madhya Pradesh uh, when they met with an accident with a trolley. Now, India has been witnessing a severe heat wave this month. Indian Meteorological Department has issued advisories highlighting the continuation of a severe heat wave over the Gangetic, West Bengal and Odisha. Orange alert has been issued in Odisha and West Bengal, while yellow alert has been issued in Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Bihar and Jharkhand. Warm night conditions are expected to persist in Odisha, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh. And humid weather can be expected in Maharashtra, Goa, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Shifting focus to sports now, an absolute carnage, a proper hammering and total annihilation. Call it whatever you want, the match number 35 of IPL was what dreams are made of. Hyderabad openers Travis Head and Abhishek Sharma battled in fifth gear, bringing up a new IPL record of 125 for 0 in the power play. The highest of no runs scored in any T20 game in this stage, Delhi showed intent but fell short by 67 runs, unable to protect the Keela Kotla. Sunrisers Hyderabad kept the party rolling with a dominant display with Travis Head and Abhishek Sharma smashing boundaries all over the park. The run feast wasn't over. Head went berserk, blasted a half century in 16 balls and continued the offensive attack of power hitting. This is absolute carnage. The Arun Jaitley Stadium witnessed history as Sunrisers Hyderabad smashed 125 runs in the power play, breaking not just the IPL but the T20 power play record altogether. 
However, the Delhi spinners slammed the brakes on the SRA juggernaut, halting the record-breaking run feast, Kuldeep Yadav taking 4 for 55 on the night. But Shabazz Ahmed continued the assault, notching up his maiden IPL 50 and taking SRH to a mammoth total of 266 runs, the highest scored in Delhi's Arunjetli Stadium. The Capitals openers attempted a counter-attack, but their promising start fizzled out as they were dismissed cheaply. So 16 runs. But not the men who followed. McGough and Porel launched a stunning assault and rained down boundaries, smashing a massive 88 runs in the power play. That is ordinary bowling. Jake Fraser McGough feasted on the SRH bowlers, taking them to the cleaners, blazing his way to the third fastest IPL 50 in just 15 balls. Delhi were ahead in the asking rate, chasing a mammoth total. But the middle overs changed the game. The Capitals were pulled back between 9 and 14 overs. Mank Barkande's double strike tore through Delhi's middle order. And then Hyderabad's bowlers sealed the win. Markande and Natarajan's four-wicket haul took SRH to a 67-run win. They leapfrogged Kolkata to claim the second place on the league table. Now good news for India in the world of chess. India's D. Gukesh beat France's Alireza Firoza on, uh, on Sunday in a round 13 clash of the fight candidates 2024 at the Great Hall in Toronto, Canada. Now Gukesh moved to the top of the leaderboard, being the sole leader ahead of the USA's Hiraku Nakamura and Russia's Ian Nepomniachi with one round left. Gukesh now has 8.5 points, while Hiraku and Nepomniachi are tied for second with 8 points. Now to the world of technology, if you're someone who's tired of finding ways to translate entire PDFs to different languages, our tech expert, Technical Guruji, tells you all about a cool feature on Google Translate. Will we all use Google Translate for various requirements? If you want to check that how to say I love you in Spanish, it's very easy. Just type it down and you will tell Google that I love you in Spanish. What do you say? Or maybe you want to translate a phrase or something. It's a very easy way to translate between languages. But did you know that you can also do this to your PDF documents? Well, this is a very interesting tip. Hai. Just imagine that you have a long PDF document which is written in English hai, and you want it to get translated into Hindi. Now, this is a way that you select the text, paste and then get the Hindi version and then paste again and whatever. But the easiest option is that just use the Google Translate option. Pe you have an option to upload a document. Just carefully upload your file and within seconds, you would see aapko jis language mein apna translation chahiye. Google is doing that for you in just one click and you get a PDF right away. Well, a formatting thoda sa change ho sakti hai, to ek bar aap usko double check kar le, to you will have a you know, immediate copy of a document in the language that you want. Quite interesting tech tip, zero use karna kaafi time bachayegi aapka. carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat-trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn... Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes... You can count on us.
हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एन डी टीवी पर एटीन लोकसभा इलेक्शन As always, NDTV has its ear to the ground. With the biggest pie of 80 seats, all eyes will be on Uttar Pradesh. Will the Troika ensure the Modi umbrella unites all? It is the first election in Naya Kashmir since the scrapping of Article 370. Will the same number of lotuses bloom in the desert, or can Gehlot lend a helping hand to India? The BJP having max here with the only pillar standing of Chhindwara Fall. Can Didi once again withstand the sacred tide? Will BJP stay strong in its northeast bastion? Jhadu ka jadu or Modi magic can Congress gain lost ground in Punjab? Will Revan Reddy be able to increase the Congress strength in Telangana this time? And in Andhra Pradesh, will the Jagannath be able to stop Chandra Babu Naidu? गैजेट्स दोस्तों ये एक ऐसी दुनिया है दैट्स एंडलेस मतलब द काइंड ऑफ गैजेट्स दैट वी हैव ऑल अराउंड अस मे बी इन आर पॉकेट्स इन आर इयर्स ऑन द रिस्ट बहुत लंबी लिस्ट हो जाती है एंड दैट्स द रीजन मैं आपके लिए हर वीक बेसिकली ट्राई टू कंपाइल समथिंग इन अ नाइस पैकेज इन दिस शो द आइडिया इज टू टॉक अबाउट गैजेट्स द आइडिया इज टू आंसर ऑल योर क्वेश्चन और बहुत मजे से हम बात करते हैं लेटेस्ट गैजेट्स को एक्सप्लोर करते हुए हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज गौरव एके टेक्निकल गुरुजी यू आर वाचिंग गैजेट्स 360 विद टेक्निकल गुरुजी तो जल्दी से आगे बढ़ते हैं चलिए शुरू करते हैं फ्रेंड्स एज यूजल बिफोर वी स्टार्ट एक बार थोड़ा सा ब्रेक लगाना पड़ेगा और रिकॉल करना पड़ेगा पिछले पूरे वीक को कि आखिर क्या क्या नए नए गैजेट्स लॉन्च हुए हैं या क्या नई खबरें आई हैं फ्रॉम फील्ड ऑफ गैजेट्स दिस वीक इन द सेक्शन न्यूज ऑफ द वीक Insta360 has launched its highly anticipated Insta360 X4, a groundbreaking camera which offers you 8K 360 degrees video capture. Creators can now shoot first and point later for unprecedented flexibility. The X4 feature has an upgraded 5.7K 60fps and 4K 100fps modes, plus the iconic invisible selfie stick effect, stunning third-person perspectives. Ke liye. The X4 also excels as a traditional action camera with a smooth ultra wide 4K 60fps single lens mode. This car rugged design including new removable lens guards boasts karta hai of impressive waterproofing, lumbi battery life or cold weather resistance. Insta 360's AI powered editing suite content creation ko simplify karta hai offering both streamlined and in-depth editing options across its desktop and mobile apps. ये द X4 को एक एसेंशियल टूल बनाता है फॉर बोथ एंथ्यूजियस एंड प्रोफेशनल कंटेंट क्रिएटर्स रेडी हो जाइए फॉर अ टेक रेवोल्यूशन क्योंकि एसिस द ताइवनीज टेक्नोलॉजी लीडर हैज जस्ट लॉन्च इट्स माइंड ब्लोइंग जेनबुक डुओ इन इंडिया दिस लैपटॉप इज नॉट योर रेगुलर मशीन इट्स गॉट टू ओल एड स्क्रीन दैट विल मेक यू गो वाओ इमेजिन मल्टी टास्किंग लाइक अ प्रो content creation made super easy and entertainment that's a whole new level of immersive the zenbook duo is a true productivity powerhouse its detachable keyboard and kickstand means you can use it in a gazillion ways plus asus is all about going green so this laptop has recycled materials a win for performance and the planet get ready to be amazed the zenbook duo packs powerful performance with its intel core ultra 9 processor and intel arc i gpu And while you're not about the battery, it's got long life and fast charging to keep you going. Connectivity be ekdam solid hai with Thunderbolt USB, HDMI and more. Samsung, India's electronics giant, has launched a new line of smart se bhi zyada AI powered TVs. The Neo QLED 8K, Neo QLED 4K and OLED TVs promise a mind-blowing viewing experience. The Neo QLED 8K's NQ8 AI Gen3 processor is like a genius, making everything look super sharp. AI Picture Technology, AI Upscaling Pro, and more features make this the ultimate paisa vasool option. Plus, with Real Depth Enhancer Pro, it feels like you're actually inside the scene. During cricket matches, AI Motion Enhancer Pro tracks the ball so well you won't miss a second. The Neo QLED 4K and glare-free OLED also have powerful processors. For stunning 4K and glare-free viewing, plus Dolby Atmos gives you that amazing theatrical experience. 
these TVs aren't just for movies. Cloud gaming, education apps, and even smart yoga with an AI mat. These TVs are all-round entertainers. Plus, they connect seamlessly with your smartphone and other gadgets too. So, friends, for the top story of the week, मेरे पास में है nothing. Well, nothing से I mean these two new products from nothing. This is the all new uh, earphone from nothing, which is called nothing ear, and this is an affordable version called the ear A. अब नथिंग आपको पता है इट्स वेरी यू नो यूनिक ब्रांड जहां पे वो काफी इंटरेस्टिंग डिजाइन मिलता है एंड द काइंड ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स दैट दे हैव इन द लाइनअप इट्स क्वाइट यूनिक एक्सपीरियंस और बेसिकली हमको वही नया प्रीमियम एक्सपीरियंस मिला है इन दीज टू न्यू ईयरफोन्स फ्रॉम नथिंग बेसिकली फिर रिमेंबर नथिंग ने अपनी शुरुआत भी जो की थी वो एक ईयरफोन के साथ ही की थी नाउ दिस इज द लेटेस्ट साइट्रेशन लेट सी अब क्लोज और हम पता लगाते हैं कि आखिर इन नए ईयरफोन्स के क्या फीचर्स हैं कमिंग स्ट्रेट from nothing nothing is about to rock your world yet again with the nothing ear buds the nothing ear a and the nothing ear with their next level sound let's talk about the nothing ear a first pehli nazar mein these buds are head turners fresh color options clear design compact and cool and check this out ear a is smart about noise too it knows how your ear fits so ye aapko deta hai just the right noise cancellation what's even better it figures out how loud your surroundings are aur uske hisab se noise cancellation adjust karta hai for serious peace and quiet and the sound you're going to love it your a may a custom driver hai for deep bass and clear highs and the bass and hands it's like a mini party in your ears plus long lasting battery ka matlab in earbuds ka play time doesn't stop ab baat kare nothing ear ki to if you want an audio experience that's next level say hello to the nothing ear iska ceramic driver ensure karta hai that you get to hear crystal clear highs booming bass like it's a front row seat at a concert it's power pack too It has a long battery life and these buds support wireless charging. Plus, ये बना है गेमिंग के लिए भी. That low lag mode makes all the difference with reactions lightning fast, leaving the competition in the dust. Whichever you choose, the Nothing Ear A or the Nothing Ear, you're getting next generation features packed with tech that's built to last and guaranteed to make your music and your life. Sound awesome. So guys, there you have it. The two new latest earphones from Nothing, completely wireless. The all new Nothing Ear and the Nothing Ear A. Well, to be honest, मुझे इसका design ज़्यादा interesting लगता है. The simple reason is that this Nothing Ear is almost looking exactly the same as the previous version. आपको पता है the Nothing Ear 2 that came. तो design feels quite familiar. But at the same time, this one, the Ear A in particular, it looks quite unique uh, like a lunch box to be honest kafi fresh color hai this yellow is giving a different vibe altogether uh, at the same time hamare paas mein jo nothing ka signature you know we have this transparent design going on to wo humko in dono earphones se mil jata hai and basically with interesting features like active noise cancellation ya fir in fact uh, quick pairing ya all together agar hum baat karte hain just like the 11 mm dynamic driver these earphones are quite interesting uh, and now speaking of the price the launch price for this nothing ear a is rupees 599 and for this the ear is 10999 rupees so ye hai nothing ear phones uh, well use kar sakte hain and if you have a nothing phone these could be a nice companion altogether so friends just as we spoke about the new nothing ear phones mujhe sound dimag mein kahin na kahin click kar rahi thi and sound se dimag mein aaya siri बिकॉज ऑल द आई फोन यूजर्स एटलीस्ट द वंस जो नया नया आई फोन लेते हैं या फिर हो सकता है वो लोग जो काफी टाइम से आई फोन को यूज कर रहे हैं एट टाइम्स दे टेंड टू यूज सीरी अ लॉट वो बार बार बोलते हैं हे सीरी दिस हे सीरी दैट और बात करते रहते हैं अपने आई फोन के साथ में आने वाले डिजिटल असिस्टेंट के साथ बट द क्वेश्चन इज डिड यू नो विच आई फोन वॉज इट जिसके साथ में सीरी वॉज लॉन्च फॉर द फर्स्ट टाइम You know what? Siri is quite old. She is actually 13 years old, and the simple reason is it was in 2011 that Siri came along the iPhone 4s for the first time ever. Now that time Siri was not that powerful. Uh, thoda slow bhi tha. At the same time, the functionality was quite limited. But today it's very smart. At the same time, kind of enables us to do a lot more stuff with our iPhone just by using our voice. Did you know this? If yes, amazing. If no, then please let me know just by writing at tg at the rate ntv dot com. Or I will see what else you have. Or any interesting trivia you have for me. 
Now friends, for the next story, I need to move out of our studios straight to Samsung Opera House, जहाँ पे हम देखने वाले हैं the latest range of TVs coming straight from Samsung. As promised, I am out of the studio and right now I am at the Samsung's Opera House. Or yaha pe Samsung just unveiled the latest lineup of AI TVs for this year. Guys, let me tell you, the TVs are fantastic because pehli baat we have huge sizes going all the way up to 98 inches, and second thing we have some amazing set of AI features packed in. So yaha pe let's see up close how exactly are these Samsung's latest. AI TVs and uske baad I'll sit with Mr Mohandeep to know more about these new TVs straight from Samsung Samsung India's leading name in electronics ne smart TVs ke definition ko literally redefine kar diya hai their 2024 lineup is here and it's all about AI powered awesomeness the new QLED 8K is the star with its advanced NQ8 AI Gen 3 processor taiyar ho jaiye for jaw dropping clarity AI picture technology and AI upscaling pro purane video content ko near 8K visuals mein transform kar sakte hain for sports fans AI motion and enhance the pro tracks everything with zero blur this beast even adjusts settings on the fly for movies and games craving 4k excellence the neo qled 4k delivers with its nq4 ai gen 2 processor blacks are deep colors pop thanks to quantum matrix technology aur ye boast karta hai of the world's first pantone validated display for accuracy and don't forget the immersive dolby atmos sound dolby atmos sound isko ek ultimate home theater experience ke kabil banata hai samsung apne indian users ko samajhta hai cloud gaming lata hai triple a titles wo bhi kisi console ke bina the education hub makes learning interactive and smart yoga ai powered posture correction bhi देता है से बाय बाय टू योर सेटअप बॉक्सेस एप्स आर बिल्ट राइट इन प्लस एंजॉय ओवर 100 फ्री चैनल्स विद Samsung TV Plus Samsung 2024 AI TVs आर अ टेक लवर्स ड्रीम कम ट्रू एंड प्राइसेस स्टार्ट फ्रॉम रुपीस 139990 तो दोस्तों आज हम हैं टेक्निकल गुरुजी के साथ तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं आज का एपिसोड ओके अम हाउ हाउ डू यू थिंक कि AI से क्या होने वाला है मतलब ओके When you see me, when you hear about technology, the first thing that comes to mind is चलिए शुरू करते हैं तो when I say AI TV, what comes to your mind? The first thing. For a brilliant question, I think what differentiates AI is its capability to understand, let's say the scenarios in which the content is being consumed, let's say the content that is being consumed, its ability to uh, understand, and then personalize the output to your liking. Friends, I'm going to tell you something very interesting. So, TVs used to be dumb. मतलब आपको पता है वो याद है टाइम जब यू used to go ऊपर छत पे एंटीना हिला के और फिर आप टीवी देख रहे हो मतलब वहाँ से हम आगे निकले वी गॉट स्मार्ट टीवीज बहुत हमने इसे अच्छे से एंजॉय किया बट नाउ विद द ए आई टी वी इज कमिंग इन आई थिंक इट्स सेफ टू से दैट दीज वुड बी वन ऑफ द स्मार्टेस्ट डिवाइस दैट यू वुड हैव इन द हाउस आई मीन स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द फोन दैट हैज ए आई बिल्ट इन टू द अप्लाइंसिस विद बी स्पोक ए आई and now with the tv yeah. i think uh, ai is really you know taking this stretch ki whatever devices we use they are getting really smart with time absolutely and i think again if i were to come consumer in consumer wants connected mm. personalized and secure ecosystem this is how does the future look like i i think uh, uh, without without the device being in your face huh. uh without the requirements of doing settings changing settings being in your face i think the expectation is that the devices are intelligent enough to solve whatever you are wanting to and i think that's what we are building for is it is it safe to say that technology uh, like it's is the best when you don't know it's there absolutely it should work behind the scenes absolutely if i have to ask you just picking in your favorite feature i mean of course like it's like picking a favorite child but just saying but you know i let me not say necessarily favorite hmm. but i have a very very heightened sense of uh, you know this entire issue of security huh. and for me that is something that uh, kind of uh, brings you the peace of mind yeah so this peace of mind that also this knox layer uh, brings to your mind is 
is immensely important. So guys, there you have it, the new TVs from Samsung. The AI is really taking the game to the next level. I mean, it's a very fun way. These new TVs are packing in the latest technologies. For example, things like the latest NQ8 AI Gen 3 processor or amazing quality displays. Everything packed into this one gadget. Well, that's it for this story. Now, I'm going to tell you a very interesting tech tip and answering all the questions in the segment Ask CG. See you right after this short break. Carnival of Democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn, join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. After five years, we are again getting an opportunity to exercise our right to vote. This is a right which has been earned after a very long and hard struggle by our great leaders. We must not waste this opportunity. I have pledged that I will vote I have appealed to all my family members and friends to come out and vote for the development of our great nation. I have a right to decide who will run my country for the next five years and for that I need to vote. So I pledge to vote and I encourage all my family members, all my colleagues at Hyundai Motor India, and of course, all the citizens of my great country to go ahead and vote. Vote now. Hello friends, welcome back after the break to your favorite show about gadgets. It's Gadget 360 with Technical Guruji. Here is my name is Gaurav aka Technical Guruji. And I have come back to our studios in our studios. Straight from Samsung Opera House here. I have a lot of time because I was flying by the speed of light. Well guys, fun aside, if we talk about a serious point of view, I am going to give you a nice tech tip. If you take it in your work, you can save a lot of time. Well, we all use Google Translate for various requirements. If you want to check that how to say I love you in Spanish, it's very easy. Just type it down and you will tell Google that I love you in Spanish. Or maybe you want to translate a phrase or something. It's a very easy way to translate between languages. But did you know that you can also do this to your PDF documents? Well, this is a very interesting tip. है. Just imagine that you have a long PDF document which is written in English है, and you want it to get translated into Hindi. Now, this is a way that you select the text, paste and then get the Hindi version and then paste again and whatever. But the easiest option is that just use the Google Translate option. There you have an option to upload a document. Just carefully upload your file and within seconds you would see aapko jis language mein apna translation chahiye. Google is doing that for you in just one click and you get a PDF right away. Well, a formatting thoda sa change ho sakti hai, to ek bar aap usko double check kar le, so you will have a you know, immediate copy of a document in the language that you want. Quite interesting tech tip, zero use karna kafi time bachayegi aapka hai. 
फ्रेंड्स यू नो वॉट टाइम इज इट क्योंकि अभी जो आपको मेरी स्माइल बता रही है इट्स वेरी ऑब्वियस द टाइम इज अबाउट आस्क टी जी दिस इज अक्शन जहां पे आई ट्राई टू आंसर ऑल योर क्वेश्चन जो आप पूछते हैं अराउंड योर गैजेट्स अभी देखते हैं इस हफ्ते हमारे पास में कौन से सवाल हैं और मेरे पास उनके क्या जवाब आपको मिलने वाले हैं यू नो आई एल बी वेरी ऑनेस्ट विद यू अगर हम बात करते हैं एक अफोर्डेबल प्रिंटर की विद लो रनिंग कॉस्ट इट डजेंट गो टूगेदर टू बी ऑनेस्ट या तो जो आपका प्रिंटर है वो अप फ्रंट थोड़ा ज्यादा प्राइस आपको पे करनी पड़ेगी उसके बाद विद टाइम द रनिंग कॉस्ट वुड बी रियली लो अदरवाइज द काइंड ऑफ चीप प्रिंटर्स दैट यू गेट राइट अप फ्रंट उनकी पर पेज प्रिंटिंग कॉस्ट बहुत ज्यादा होती है दिस इज द हार्श रियालिटी ऑफ द कंप्लीट प्रिंटर इको सिस्टम सो फिर प्लीज स्पेसिफाई योर बजट नेक्स्ट टाइम दैट इफ योर बजट इज लेट से फाइव थाउजेंड और टेन थाउजेंड और फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड रुपीज आई वुड बी इन अ बेटर पोजिशन की मैं आपको एक ठीक जवाब दे पाऊंगा बिकॉज एज ऑफ नाउ टू बी ऑनेस्ट आई आई एम नॉट इन अ पोजिशन टू गिव यू अ राइट आंसर द सिंपल रीजन इज आई डोंट नो योर बजट एट द सेम टाइम द रनिंग कॉस्ट बजट प्रिंटर में यूजुअली हाई होती है इफ यू कंपेयर सो आई मीन दैट्स एन ऑनेस्ट आंसर हाई टी जी कुड यू प्लीज सजेस्ट मी अ फोन बिटवीन ट्वेंटी टू ट्वेंटी फाइव थाउजेंड आई नीड इट फॉर गेमिंग एंड ओकेशनली क्लिकिंग पिक्चर ओके सो यू नीड अ फोन फॉर गेमिंग विच सिंपली मीन्स दैट परफॉर्मेंस हैज टू बी गुड एंड टुडे ऑनेस्टली स्पीकिंग अगर हम बात करते हैं अच्छी परफॉर्मेंस वाले फोन की इन दिस प्राइस ब्राकेट द वन प्लस नॉर्ड सी ई फोर कम स्ट्रेट टू माई माइंड बिकॉज द लेटेस्ट क्वेलकॉम स्नैप ड्रैगन सेवन जेन थ्री प्रोसेसर इट्स वेरी पावरफुल यू गेट अमेजिंग पैकेज ऑल टूगेदर सो पच्चीस हजार के बजट में वन प्लस नॉर्ड सी ई फोर इज अ गुड बेट सो फ्रेंड्स दे यू हैव इट अ कंप्लीटली नाइसली पैकेज एपिसोड ऑफ गैजेट थ्री सी जो आपको जस्ट अभी Uh, मैंने डिलीवर किया है एज ऑलवेज विद एवरी एपिसोड इस बार भी हमने काफी कुछ इंटरेस्टिंग कवर किया फ्रॉम टीवी टू इयरफोन्स टू एन इंटरेस्टिंग टेक टिप एज वेल जिसको आप यूज कर सकते हैं जस्ट स्टे ट्यून अंटिल नेक्स्ट वीक बिकॉज अगले वीक आई गॉट सम मोर अमेजिंग स्टफ कमिंग स्ट्रेट फॉर यू इन द मीन टाइम इफ यू हैव एनी फीडबैक एनी क्वेश्चन एनी क्वेरीज यू नो द एड्रेस इट्स टी जी एट द रेट इंटरव्यू डॉट कॉम आप भेजिए अपने सभी ई मेल्स आई एम हियर टू रीड दम ऑल एंड आई एम गोट सी यू नेक्स्ट वीक हैव अ गुड डे Now India has been witnessing a severe heat wave this month. Indian Meteorological Department has issued advisories highlighting the continuation of a severe heat wave over the Gangetic, West Bengal and Odisha. Orange alert has been issued in Odisha and West Bengal, while yellow alert has been issued in Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Tamil Nadu, Bihar and Jharkhand. Warm night conditions are expected to persist in Odisha, Uttar Pradesh, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh and humid weather can be expected in Maharashtra, Goa, Kerala, Andhra Pradesh and Telangana. Shifting focus to sports now in absolute carnage of proper hammering and total annihilation call it whatever you want the match number 35 of IPL was what dreams are made of Hyderabad openers Travis Head and Abhishek Sharma battled in fifth gear bringing up a new IPL record of 125 for 0 in the power play the highest of no runs scored in any t20 game in this stage delhi showed intent but fell short by 67 runs unable to protect the kela kotla sunrisers hyderabad kept the party rolling with a dominant display the travis head and abhishek sharma smashing boundaries all over the park the run feast wasn't over head went berserk blasted a half century in 16 balls and continued the offensive attack of power hitting This is absolute carnage the arun jetli stadium witnessed history as sunrisers hyderabad smashed 125 runs in the power play breaking not just the ipl but the t20 power play record altogether However the Delhi spinners slammed the brakes on the SRA juggernaut halting the record breaking run feast Kuldeep Yadav taking 4 for 55 on the night 4 for Kuldeep Yadav 
but Shabha Ahmed continued the assault. Notting up is made in IPL 50 and taking SRH to a mammoth total of 266 runs, the highest scored in Delhi's Arun Jetli Stadium. The Capitals openers attempted a counter-attack, but their promising start fizzled out as they were dismissed cheaply. So 16 runs. But not the men who followed. McGough and Porel launched a stunning assault and rained down boundaries, smashing a massive 88 runs in the power play. That is ordinary bowling. Jake Fraser McGough feasted on the SRH bowlers, taking them to the cleaners, blazing his way to the third fastest IPL 50 in just 15 balls. Delhi were ahead in the asking rate, chasing a mammoth total. But the middle overs changed the game. The Capitals were pulled back between 9 and 14 overs. Mank Barkande's double strike tore through Delhi's middle order. And then Hyderabad's bowlers sealed the win. Markande and Natarajan's four-wicket haul took SRH to a 67-run win. They leapfrogged Kolkata to claim the second place on the league table. Now good news for India in the world of chess. India's D. Gukesh beat France's Alireza Firoza on, uh, on Sunday in a round 13 clash of the fight candidates 2024 at the Great Hall in Toronto, Canada. Now Gukesh moved to the top of the leaderboard, being the sole leader ahead of the USA's Hiraku Nakamura and Russia's Ian Nepomniachi with one round left. Gukesh now has 8.5 points, while Hiraku and Nepomniachi are tied for second with 8 points. Now to the world of technology, if you're someone who's tired of finding ways to translate entire PDFs to different languages, our tech expert, Technical Guruji, tells you all about a cool feature on Google Translate. Will we all use Google Translate for various requirements? If you want to check that how to say I love you in Spanish, it's very easy. Just type it down and you will tell Google that I love you in Spanish. Mein kya bolte hai? Ya maybe you want to translate a phrase or something. It's a very easy way to translate between languages. But did you know that you can also do this to your PDF documents? Well, this is a very interesting tip. Hai. Just imagine that you have a long PDF document which is English mein likha hai, and you want it to get translated into Hindi. Now, this is a way that you select the text, paste and then get the Hindi version and then paste again and whatever. But the easiest option is that just use the Google Translate option. There you have an option to upload a document. Just carefully upload your file and within seconds, you would see that you need to language in which language. Google is doing that for you in just one click and you get a PDF right away. Well, a formatting can be changed a little bit, so if you double check it, so you will have a you know, immediate copy of a document in the language that you want. Quite interesting tech tip, you will use it a lot of time. The 18th Lok Sabha elections. As always, NDTV has its ear to the ground. With the biggest pie of 80 seats, all eyes will be on Uttar Pradesh. Will the Troika ensure the Modi umbrella unites all? It is the first election in Naya Kashmir since the scrapping of Article 370. Will the same number of lotuses bloom in the desert? Or can Gehloth lend a helping hand to India? The BJP having Max here with the only pillar standing of Chindwara Fall. Can Didi once again withstand the Sakran Tide? Will BJP stay strong in its northeast bastion? Jharu ka jadu or Modi magic? Can Congress gain lost ground in Punjab? Will Revant Reddy be able to increase the Congress strength in Telangana this time? And in Andhra Pradesh, will the Jagannath be able to stop Chandrababu Naidu and Pavan Kalyan? Can BJP win back its only stronghold in the south? Or will it be a Congress consolidation? Can BJP make a dent in the Dravidian den? A debate has many facets, perhaps no one right answer. Left, right and centre, conversations that get to the core of the debate. That matters to you. The 18th Lok Sabha elections. 
as always, NDTV has its ear to the ground. With the biggest pie of 80 seats, all eyes will be on Uttar Pradesh. Will the Troika ensure the Modi umbrella unites all? It is the first election in Naya Kashmir since the scrapping of Article 370. Will the same number of lotuses bloom in the desert? Or can Gehloth lend a helping hand to India? With BJP having Max here with the only pillar standing of Chindwara Fall. Can Didi once again withstand the saffron tide? Will BJP stay strong in its northeast bastion? Jharu ka jadu or Modi magic? Can Congress gain lost ground in Punjab? Will Revant Reddy be able to increase the Congress strength in Telangana this As citizens of this great nation, we have the power to shape its future. And one of the most crucial ways we can do that is by casting our vote. It's not just a right for every citizen, it's a responsibility. A responsibility to ourselves, to our communities, and to our country. So, I urge all of you to exercise your right to vote. I always ensure that I fulfill this duty to our country. This is NDTV, and you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello, Moto. Hello and welcome to News at 10. I'm your host, Rika Roy. We'll bring you all the big stories from across India and across the globe at this hour, politics, sports and a lot more. But first, dive straight into the headlines of the hour. Big reform in health insurance policy, the health insurance age cap has been removed. All citizens aged above 65 can now buy a health insurance policy. Mega India Block Rally in Jharkhand today. Ulgulan Nyai Rally will be held in Ranchi ahead of the second phase of polls. There will be repolling in 11 uh, stations in Inar Manipur um, on the 22nd of April. Severe heat wave grips India above 43 degree temperature in 14 cities. Odisha's Budh and Badipada records maximum temperature of 45.2 degrees Celsius. In Maldives, litmus test for Moizu and his pro-China policy. Can President Moizu secure his tenure? It's a test for his hostile India policy as well. And India's Digu cash registers are thrilling win in round 13 at candidates' chess in Toronto to take sole lead. And here's our top story. The Insurance Regulatory and Development Authority of India has removed the age cap on buying health insurance policies from 1st of April this year. Earlier, individuals were restricted to purchasing new insurance policies only until the age of 65. However, after the recent changes that have come into effect from the 1st of April, regardless of age, everyone is eligible to purchase a new health insurance. The move by the Insurance Regulatory Authority aims to create a more inclusive healthcare ecosystem in India and to encourage insurance provider companies to diversify their product offerings. This is a big, big move that has uh, come about and this uh, will perhaps cover about 65, roughly 65 crore people who are uh, in the, who are senior citizens and are not covered currently. Only 8.6% of country's population was over the age of 60 years at the time of the previous census, which was 2011. 
by 2015 this proportion is to increase by 19.5 percent um, so a large number of them can now be covered under medical insurance currently 60 uh, individuals above, uh, above 65 um, did not have uh, uh, this advantage although few of the uh, insurance companies still offered but at a very very high premium i am joined at this hour by dr sharanji chatterjee who is a senior consultant of internal medicine at the indraprastha apollo hospital in new delhi um, dr chatterjee uh, for uh, every company uh, it is for every company to give an insurance right and because uh, earlier few companies would give it but at a very high uh, premium but right now uh, everyone has to be giving the medical insurance above 65 years that's right yeah so it's a very welcome move i must say but we have to see as to what these insurance companies are really doing because all these earlier things that used to happen would really be very restricted they would cut off half of the diseases and as you know as you go above the 65 years of age quite a few people are suffering from quite a, quite a few illnesses and if they all are said that they are the points which cannot be covered then it's a huge thing because then most of the diseases are not covered so the IRDI also has to see how to uh, cover all the pre-existing illnesses at some stage of the at some stage of your age and be more friendly for the consumers will the selection be now even though the waiting period for with pre-existing medical conditions have been reduced but how rigorous would you expect this to be? See, uh, so, sometimes, sometimes experience with insurance can be really. It, 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 we have seen uh, while working in the hospital that uh, working with these insurance things, they ask so many questions, and at, at the end of the day, they would reject. We have been paying such a, such a high premium, and I would expect that it would be still a reasonably high premium uh, to be paid. I would that I would expect that the insurance companies, uh, with in obviously under uh, under guidance of the IADI, become more friendly to their uh, to their users and the questions and the uh, and basically the when they, they when they when they reject claims, they have mm -hmm. to be much more careful because e even after you are paying so much of uh, money, if you if if it gets rejected when it's really needed, it is a huge issue. So. Although it's a such a it's a very very welcome move that above 65 years people are being covered with insurance by insurance companies, but it has to be really made friendly to be user friendly. Well, uh, you know, IRDA has said that uh, the targeted policies for seniors and seniors and millennials will reflect a nuanced approach to diverse needs. Could, could you tell us um, a little more about how nuanced the approach should be and what are the things it should really focus on and under what buckets we should look at getting uh, these kind of benefits? See, one is that there has to be at the most maybe a buffer period for your older illnesses that beyond, uh, beyond maybe two years or three years, maybe I would say beyond three years or something, your older illnesses are uh, covered. Then people their room capping and all that has to be also very carefully done because otherwise you may not be allowed to stay in a room then there are other costs which are included in the hospital expenses they have to be working with the hospitals to find out as to what all can be covered because quite a few things nowadays are not given by these companies and quite a few things are rejected by them so mm -hmm. the amount of money which the patient finally gets after insurance clearance also if they even allow it is sometimes quite a measly amount so all these things need to be really, really seen into to make it uh, consumer friendly. They have to be, uh, the, the, when they basically deduct money, it has to be seen that it was all applicable and what is, so uh, that it is, uh, that the essential money is at least paid to the consumer. So they have to really, uh, the IRDI, the hospital associations and, uh, and the insurance companies have to work together to make it friendly because otherwise, uh, as our experience tells us that it can sometimes be, uh, it is not friendly at all in quite a few circumstances. Dr. Chatterjee, while we are talking about insurance cover for the senior citizens, one of the big things that 
probably we need, need to discuss is the access for the middle class. Most of the middle class consumers don't access health insurance because of higher premiums. And now we are talking about an age group that is above 65. Um, you know, how effective then one can hope for the policy to be for the middle class to access uh, such a thing, such a product? Yeah, see, as I said, uh, it, it, it all needs to be worked out. It sounds very good. It's a very good move by the IADI. But it, so if, if, if the premium is more than 2 lakh rupees or something like that for a very for a, for a measly amount, then quite a few people won't be able to afford it. Mm -hmm. And quite a few people won't even avail of this of this, uh, <coughs> of, uh, of, uh, uh, of this facility. So we, everybody needs to really sit into it and make it more fruitful for all the people, including the consumers and everything. And obviously, it, it cannot be a loss for the hospital. It cannot be a loss for the insurance company. So they have to work out a way so that it is made more friendly, more pocket friendly as well, so that, so that more and more people can uh, avail of it and the healthcare system reaches everybody, at least most of the people in this country. Doctor, while we are, uh, you know, talking about uh, healthcare for 65-year-old, I do not see a bullish approach among the young Indians who are getting into jobs, getting their first salary, uh, and buying a health insurance, um, because there seems to be certain kind of a mindset, or I would say, a block towards buying health insurances. How can that really change? No, I think it is changing a bit. Uh, over years, I have seen, because I have been working in a private hospital for now 20, 27 years, I have seen definitely a, cha a mindset change in people. Uh, obviously, it hasn't changed that much. It needs to change much more. It is to be taken as an investment rather than really... <coughs> that it's an, the health health is, comes as an investment. It is not really an expenditure. And because once you fall sick you re and you want to avail of the best of services in private hospitals and a, a good treatment, a good accommodation, <clears throat> clean environment, you need to spend some money. I think it is changing over the last couple of years. This is what I've seen. More and more people are getting into health and that's how they're affording private hospitals as well. At the same time, I must say that the age group has really increased. The survival time in our country has really increased. In the last couple of months, I have treated so many people who are above 100 years of age. So it is such a good move that above 65 people are covering and I was very happy when they told me that I started to cover more than 65 because it, it came as a change for me that in the last six months, I must have treated at least 15, 20 people who were above 100 years of age, which was not the story earlier. So uh, the, the age group has to change. Younger people have to realize that it is an investment, not an expenditure. Right. More and more people should get uh, more and more people should get an insurance of a good amount so that so that they can avail of these services on a long term basis and the younger age mm -hmm. and the younger you are uh, if you started at 30 years of age or 25 years of age the premium money is much lesser Absolutely. and it should be and but you have to be very careful with your tra with your agents and all that when they say that oh it will be, you should before you change from one policy to the other they would say that they, oh they will all be carried on mm -hmm. be very careful half of the time they don't carry on from one insurance company to the other so yeah. when you are young and you are choosing one company See to it that that is a good company. When you're mm -hmm. changing, again, see to it that everything is carried on. It's not a good, very good idea because quite a few times, the middlemen and all that, they try to change it. And when you finally need it at the age of 45, they'll say, oh, you changed our insurance company. You're not covered for this disease, that disease. So, but once you're guided well, and there are clear cut instructions, That's and, very as, as I said, the regulatory authorities has to see into it, then it's a very, very beneficial thing. Absolutely. It's a welcome move, though, by IIR. DAI to uh, have uh, 65 plus year old uh, citizens under the ambit of health insurance, though uh, a few of the uh, health insurance companies were offering health insurance for 65 plus, but now everyone can avail of that. However, the premiums will be much higher. Thank you very much, Dr. Chatterjee, for joining us on the broadcast this morning. Now, moving on to some political now news, India Bloc is holding a mega rally today. Leaders from several political parties, including Malikarjun Kharge, Rahul Gandhi, Lalu Prasad Yadav, Farooq Abdullah, Akhilesh Yadav, and Sunita Kejriwal, the wife of Delhi CM Arvind Kejriwal, are likely to join in the opposition India Bloc's 
uh, Ulgula Niai rally that will be held in Jharkhand's capital uh, Ranchi. It will be led by JMM. Uh, let's listen into some of the reactions ahead of the rally. मैसेज बस यही है कि ये तानाशाही के खिलाफ हमें लड़ाई लड़ेंगे जिस तरीके से जन प्रतिनिधि चुनकर आए हेमंत सुरेन जी हों अरविंद केजरीवाल जी हों उन पे ईडी आईटी सीबीआई इन सब तरीके की जांच लगाकर उनको जेल में डालने का काम किया है निर्दोष लोगों को जेल में डाल रहे हैं क्योंकि जस्ट उनकी गुनाह क्या है वो इस केंद्र सरकार की तानाशाही के खिलाफ लड़ रहे हैं तो अगर आपने फेज़ वन का चुनाव देखा होगा तो उसी से आपको स्पष्ट हो गया होगा कि अब ये प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी का एज अ प्रधानमंत्री आखिरी चुनाव है ये बहुत बड़ी रैली है और मुझे नहीं लगता कि झारखंड में इतनी बड़ी रैली कभी हुई होगी और स्वतः लोग आ रहे हैं इस महारैली में क्योंकि यहाँ पे चूँकि मान्य हेमंत सोरेन जी की बात है और जनता उनके लिए उमड़ पड़ रही है और इंडिया गठबंधन एक साथ है इस रैली की सफलता का हमें पूरा विश्वास है और सभी लोगों को जो मान्य हेमंत सोरेन जी के साथ है जो अन्याय के खिलाफ है वो आज इस रैली में आपको दिखेंगे पूरे देश भर के तमाम नेता आ रहे हैं और झारखंड झुकेगा नहीं इंडिया रुकेगा नहीं ये रैली जो है वो भारत के संविधान को बचाने के लिए भारत के लोकतंत्र को बचाने के लिए तीन बार के चुने हुए मुख्यमंत्री को आपने जेल में डाल दिया अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को उनको इंसुलिन नहीं दे रहे हैं जो लोगों की दवाओं का इंतजाम करते हैं उनको आज आप दवाओं का इंतजाम नहीं कर रहे हैं उनके जीवन के साथ आप खिलवाड़ कर रहे हैं एक झारखंड के निर्वाचित मुख्यमंत्री को आपने उनके पद पे रहते हुए उनको जेल में डाल दिया तो ये जो तानाशाही पूरे देश में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने मोदी जी की सरकार ने कायम कर रखी है उसको उखाड़ने के लिए आज हम सब लोग रांची में इकट्ठा हो रहे हैं Now, Union Home Minister Amit Shah will be campaigning in Darjeeling today for BJP MP Raju Pishta, who has repeated uh, as a candidate, who has been repeated as a candidate from the seat. Amit Shah will address a rally at the Gorkha Stadium in Lebong near Darjeeling. Last time, Pishta has won with largest margin in Bengal, with him being ahead of the runner-up by more than four lakh votes. This time, the TMC has fielded Gopal Lama, a local face. while the congress has fielded delhi university professor dr manish tamang darjeeling is a unique lok sabha constituency as it includes assembly segments of darjeeling hills siliguri and the terai region in the plains as well as the foothills so amit shah holding a rally in west bengal's darjeeling today from where raju bishta has been fielded as the candidate for bjp trinamool congress has a uh, Uh, fielded uh, Gopal Lama from there, while Congress has fielded Delhi University Professor Dr. Monish Tamang. Um, it is important for them. Darjeeling is coming up for polls in in the next phase of the elections. Uh, um, Sarab uh, Gupta, my colleague, uh, joins me for more on the phone phone line. Uh, Sarab, what are the key issues that Amit Shah will be talking about? Uh, well, he is uh, actually there at the rally. Thank you very much for joining us, uh, Sarab. What are the key issues um, Amit Shah will be trying to address in this rally? Well, you know, Darjeeling is a very tricky seat. It's not uh, very simple. There are two sentiments that are at play usually. One is, of course, the sentiment of the plains and the Tarai surrounding the Darjeeling Hills. The other is a very different sentiment in the Darjeeling Hills, and that's something that, of course, we will see play out as well. Amit Shah, of course, will be obviously addressing. this rally in darjeeling so a lot of those issues that the people of darjeeling believe in are core to their beliefs will be raised by amit shah in his speech and therefore that is something that uh, the people here will of course be uh, looking at as far as uh, this uh, you know rally is concerned there's already a decent crowd here i can ask my camera person to pan and show you this is at the gorkha stadium in lebong and this stadium of course has hosted many a football game uh, but also now hosting you know this uh, bjp uh, rally uh, here in uh, lebong uh, which is of course uh, just a few kilometers uh, you know outside darjeeling and uh, This time, interestingly, you can see on stage Bimal Gurung. Bimal Gurung is, of course, the GJM chief, and he's, of course, shifted to his allegiance to the BJP, and he's known as someone who can swing 
uh, a huge number of votes one way or the other. And therefore, this is something that he might be able to do uh, to help the BJP. And that's something the BJP believes will work out for uh, it, it in the Darjeeling seat. Last time around, uh, you know, Raju Bista, the MP, won by over 4 lakh votes. Even if the margin comes down, the BJP calculates that in this seat at least it's headed for a win. The Trinamul though has very different calculations. The Trinamul believes it's fielded a local face and the campaign in the Darjeeling Hills is primarily being led by a local party and therefore it may actually be able to do more than what it did in 2019 and it's eyeing a huge number of seats here as well. Therefore, this is going to be an interesting contest and let's see what Amit Shah has to say in a short while from now when he arrives at this rally. Sarab, uh, let me also ask you one question. Last time, uh, the BJP won 18 seats in Bengal. How many are they targeting? Is the target around 30 this time around? There are 42 seats which will be up for grabs. But the BJP is hoping to be the single largest party here and that's something that uh, they have openly stated but uh, the Trinamool is equally fighting back and they were fighting back pretty strong as well. So this is going to be a very interesting contest in that uh, sense and uh, this is, uh, I mean, as it's early days in the polls, just three seats have voted uh, in the first phase, that is Jalpaiguri, Kujwian and Alipurdwar. In the second phase, another three seats will vote, which is Darjeeling, Cal uh, you know, Raiganj and Balurgat, where state BJP president Shukant Majumdar is contesting. So it's interesting, but the first few seats are all happening in the BJP strongholds as far as voting is concerned. So the BJP BJP expects good results from these seats. Thank you very much, Saurav, for getting us uh, the picture of that rally from Darjeeling. Moving on, Barmed, the largest city in the desert on the border with Pakistan, now in the eye of a desert storm. Independent MLA from the area, Ravindra Bhatti, is now fighting as an independent in the Lok Sabha as well. The election is now a triangular contest with minister from the central cabinet, Kailash Chaudhary, fighting to defend his seat and the Congress fielding former Delhi policewoman, Umeda Ram Peniwal. Take a look. <laughs> On the Western Front, the last bastion in the Thar Desert is Barmer, barely a hundred kilometers from the Pakistan border. Barmer is the country's second largest Lok Sabha constituency, spread over 70,000 square kilometers, with over 22 lakh voters who live mainly in small villages. But Barmer is now in the eye of a desert storm. Independent MLA from this area, 26-year-old Ravindra Singh Bhatti, is now also fighting the Lok Sabha election. With a huge fan following and an army of volunteers, mainly youth, Ravindra Bhatti threatens to upset the carefully crafted calculations of the Congress and the BJP on the Barmer seat. Independent जो कर सकता है मुझे लगता है कि वो शायद सरकार के अंदर रह के भी वो आदमी नहीं कर सकते निर्दलीय पक्ष और विपक्ष के बीच की एक धुरी होती है और मैं विश्वास के साथ कह सकता हूं कि जितनी मजबूती से सदन के अंदर निर्दलीय अपनी बात रख सकता है उतनी मजबूती से पक्ष और विपक्ष के लोग भी नहीं रख सकते भाटी हैज अ ह्यूज सोशल मीडिया फॉलोइंग बट बीजेपी कैंडिडेट एंड सेंट्रल मिनिस्टर कैलाश चौधरी सेज दैट वोंट ट्रांसलेट इनटू वोट्स Chaudhary is himself banking on the Modi magic to see him through. Social media पे अगर चर्चा होने से काम नहीं होता वोट कौन देता वोट तो जनता देती है और ये वोट यहाँ पर जनता देख रहे हो तो मैं यही कहना चाहता हूँ कि वोट सिर्फ एक ही बात जो अभी आप सुन रहे हैं वोट हमारे को मोदी को देना है कई भी कई बार कोई अगर आता है उसको देखने के लिए तो कोई भी व्यक्ति आता है लेकिन वोट तो जनता देगी Barmer is a seat dominated by caste equations. The Rajput and Jat votes here usually split, holding the key to this election. Minorities, OBC and SC voters also play a crucial role in tilting the scales. And the caste factor is what has driven the Congress to choose Umeda Ram Beniwal as its candidate. The former Delhi policeman is known for his mild manners. Umeda Ram recently left Hanuman Beniwal's party, the RLP, to join the Congress. 
दस साल का मुझे दिल्ली पुलिस बतौर दिल्ली पुलिस कांस्टेबल सेवा का अनुभव है तो मुझे सब पता है कि एक पुलिस कांस्टेबल की क्या परेशानी हो सकती है एक फौजी की क्या समस्या हो सकती है एक मजदूर की क्या समस्या हो सकती है उसके बाद में मैंने बिजनेस भी किया तो एक एज ए बिजनेस जो स्टार्टअप की बात करें तो स्टार्टअप कितना मुश्किल होता है कितना अपने आप को स्ट्रगल करना वो सारी समस्याओं से निकला हुआ हूँ तो मुझे हर नागरिक की क्या समस्या हो सकती है उससे मुझे अच्छी तरीके से पता है और उसका समाधान कैसे कर सकते हैं बट इन दिस डेजर्ट लैंडस्केप ऑफ बार में देर इज वन इशू दैट डोमिनेट्स वाटर The discovery of oil reserves in Barmer has also changed the desert economy. But local people, especially youth, want a bigger share of the pie, more jobs and employment, and hopes now rest on the oil refinery that is coming up in Pachpadra in Barmer. मेन समस्या पानी के यहाँ पर है युवाओं को रोजगार और पानी ये सब दो ही बिल्कुल सबसे मेन समस्या यही है But while oil drives the economy in small villages and hamlets, people still struggle to make ends meet. Barmer lives in the shadow of drought. Agriculture is largely dependent on the monsoon. खेती बाड़ी वालों तो घने ही हैं, बिजी नहीं हैं कोई। तो कोई करो फिर मजदूरी करो। मजदूर करो सर। अटे जाओ मजदूरी करो। अनाने भाई सनार बड़ी आ जाओ, बड़ी आ जाओ। दूर हो जाओ बटो। हाँ सर। 600 kilometers from the capital city of Jaipur in the barren landscape of Barmer. There is now a politics of assertion. People want development and jobs, and the emergence of a young leader with no particular political affiliations could polarize politics here. It's turned overnight into a hot seat with the entry of independent candidate Ravindra Singh Bhati, who's really taken the desert by storm. Now, while the Congress is banking on the caste equation, the BJP is asking for votes, hoping that Modi magic will work for them. But will Ravindra Singh Bhati manage to convert his social media following into actual votes is the biggest challenge. With camera person Sushil Kumar and Raju Mali in Barmer, Harsha Kumari Singh, NDTV. Hello everyone. I urge each one of you to exercise your right to vote. Your voice matters and all our votes shape our collective future. <laughs> Let us make democracy stronger by going out and exercising our franchise. Jai Hind. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Go, Prith. In our country. We choose our leaders. We decide who is going to be ruling the country, uh, and it is something. This is both a fantastic right, privilege, and we should also see it as our constitutional duty. So this election, I am going to be there, and I hope you all will join me in casting your vote too.
का हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एन डी टीवी पर biggest carnival of democracy india's general election prime minister modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick the opposition is trying to mount a united challenge and the southern parties are standing their ground as battle lines are drawn join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024 indian elections a festival like no other and ndtv covers elections like no other when india votes you can count on us Hello everyone. I urge each one of you to exercise your right to vote. Your voice matters and all our votes shape our collective future. <laughs> Let us make democracy stronger by going out and exercising our franchise. Jai Hind. Sabha elections as always NDTV has its ear to the ground with the biggest pie of 80 seats all eyes will be on Uttar Pradesh will the troika ensure the modi umbrella unites all it is the first election in naya kashmir since the scrapping of article reform in health insurance policy as the age cap on health insurance is removed everyone aged over 65 can now buy a health insurance policy there's a mega india block rally in jharkhand today it is called the ulgula nyay rally It will be held in ranchi ahead of the second phase of the polls They'll be repolling in 11 poll polling stations in Inner Manipur on April 22nd. Severe heat wave grips India. Above 43 degree temperature has been reported in 14 cities. Odisha's Bodh and Baripada record maximum temperature at 45.2 degree Celsius. In Maldives, litmus test uh, for Muizu and his pro-China policy. Can President Muizu secure his tenure? It's a test for Muizu's hostile India policy as well. And in sports, India's D. Gokesh registers a thrilling win in the round 13 at Candidates' Chest in Toronto to take sole lead. votes today in a parliamentary election likely to test president mohammad muizu's tilt towards china and away from india the luxury tourism hotspots traditional benefactor this will be muizu's first major political test in today's parliamentary elections that will determine the extent of his control over the parliament elections will be held in 93 seats in total the opposition party moldavian democratic uh, party with 41 seats in hand currently dominates the people's um, majlis the country's parliament i'm joined by my colleague mohammad ghazali for uh, more on the story ghazali muizu came to power on the promise of sending back indian troops and is working on it but would you say that in the elections today what will really be tested is his pro china and anti india policy 
Yeah, since coming to power last year in September, Moizu has been uh, very close or his, uh, his policies have been very China-centric. He has been drifting towards China. After assuming power uh, as president in the state, he has also given many public projects to Chinese-funded companies. And his India Out campaign, being uh, supported by his party members, has been the main rallying point of his power over there. This election is for the parliament. And even in parliament, the Maldivians Democratic Party, MDP, which is... Uh, sort of headed by the former president Ibrahim Soli, who was uh, replaced by Moizu last year, holds majority in the parliament and that is why Moizu, despite being the president, his party has not been able to pass many legislations. Now, this particular election, the parliamentary polls, is being seen as whether Moizu's anti-India policy will help him to gain majority in the parliament and in turn will give him more power to pass such legislations or the former president's party, which is already in power there uh, since the last term, will be able to continue its power in the parliament. So right. both anti-India policy or the pro-China policy of Moizu uh, is going to be under test during these elections. Voting have started across the country and it will go on till 5.30. Mm -hmm. uh, weather experts are saying that perhaps there will be mo uh, evening shower, but the election commissioner there in Maldives has said that the voting time will not be extended beyond 5.30. So all those who will be in the queue by the time it is strikes 5.30, those people or those voters will be allowed to cast their vote and perhaps by midnight or Tomorrow morning, the final results will be announced on whether Moizu retains power uh, or regains power in the parliament as well, or the MDP, the opposition party, will continue to sow over in these elections. Thank you very much, Ghazali, for bringing us all those details on the elections in Maldives. Now, a row has erupted over Tihar Jail's report on Arvind Kejriwal's sugar levels after Tihar's report up has raised questions. Delhi Health Minister Saurabh Bhardwaj says that sugar level report is random. It's neither fasting, uh, it's neither PP nor fasting. Uh, Tihar's report on up's insulin uh, denial uh, to Kejriwal. In fact, let's listen in to uh, what um, Saurabh Bhardwaj had to say. दो बहस हैं, दो पक्ष हैं। एक पक्ष अरविंद केजरीवाल का पक्ष है, आम आदमी पार्टी का पक्ष है। वो पक्ष है कि मुझे 20-22 सालों से डायबिटीज है, मैं 12 साल से इंसुलिन पे हूँ। दूसरा पक्ष भारतीय जनता पार्टी और तिहार जेल का है, भारतीय जनता पार्टी की केंद्र सरकार माफ कीजिएगा। भारतीय जनता पार्टी की केंद्र सरकार और तिहार जेल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन का है वो पक्ष क्या है नहीं साहब इनकी कोई शुगर नहीं बढ़ रही नहीं ये बिल्कुल नॉर्मल है वेल स्विचिंग ट्रैक्स द मुंबई पुलिस हैव डिक्लेयर्ड जेल गैंगस्टर लॉरेंस बिश्नोई एंड हिज यंगर ब्रदर अनमोल बिश्नोई एज वांटेड accused in connection with the incident of firing outside Bollywood actor Salman Khan's residence. The Mumbai Crime Branch Police have also filed additional new sections related to threatening, indictment and destroying evidence. My colleague Radhika uh, joins us more on the story. Radhika, what do we have, uh, what is the latest in uh, this whole Salman uh, case of uh, firing outside Salman Khan's house? Uh, Mumbai police, in fact, yesterday declared Lawrence Bishnoi, the notorious gangster, and his brother Anmol Bishnoi as wanted accused in the case. In fact, uh, this is, of course, linked to the firing outside Salman Khan's house uh, in Mumbai's Bandra. Two people, of course, were arrested. And now that, uh, uh, you know, interrogation is going on, both Lawrence Bishnoi and his brother have been made accused in the case. Police have also added additional sections to the FIR, which include uh, threatening incitement as well as destroying evidence. Uh, of course, these two accused who were arrested a few days ago are under police custody till April 25. Their interrogation is still happening. In fact, accused had allegedly uh, told the police that carried out the firing uh, on the behest of Lawrence Bishnoi uh, for money. In fact, Mumbai Crime Branch is also searching for somebody who had provided um, the shooters with the gun as well as the money. In fact, uh, Vicky Gupta as well as Sagarpal are the two accused uh, who are being interrogated at this point. They were paid uh, 1 lakh and uh, 3 lakh more was promised later. So at this point, of course, uh, Lawrence Vishnu and his brother being made accused in the case. Additional sections added. Police also trying to unearth more information on the circumstances leading to the firing. 
are people who the accused were in touch with uh, and so on. Thank you very much, Radhika, for joining us with those details. Now, here's a story where crime has been uh, executed across states. Opium and poppy grown and processed in Rajasthan and brought to Hyderabad after tracking suspicious activity for almost six months based on Intel inputs. About 160 kilogram of opium poppy straws and powder has been seized by excise teams. Interestingly, it was reportedly being sold deceptively through a network of Kirana shops in Hyderabad. This quantity of poppy that you have seized, what kind of an operation was it and you are linking it to Rajasthan? These were two men who have, who you have apprehended. Uh, initially, we would like to say that uh, we had a kind of an inkling about such a thing happening for the last few months. But uh, we were looking for some kind of a solid lead uh, as to how to get into this. But uh, in the last 15-20 days, we kept a special focus on uh, people who are having some kind of a linkages uh, in dealing with such kind of things. So we got a solid lead about 15-20 days back and we are following it and uh, uh, last evening uh, we could apprehend uh, these two persons. Uh, one of them was uh, carrying a load full of uh, poppy straw in his uh, vehicle, uh, a eco car uh, in uh, Narangula station. And parallel we could plan about three or four teams in different areas. Uh, we definitely knew that there was some kind of a storage point. And uh, we understood that, we found out that the storage point is somewhere in uh, Gosha Mahal area. Uh, under the Dulpe station limits and therefore uh, uh, parallelly we sent teams to apprehend uh, the second co-accused, second accused in this uh, operation. So the so entire operation has taken how many days? Obviously you must have had intelligence and then moving yes, on Yes, yes. I would say, uh, uh, like I said, last six months is what we have been talking about but uh, I would say 15-20 days is the operation, uh, real uh, co-ho operation but uh, the real apprehension and uh, uh, take of uh, contraband uh, happened last night. And you were uh, yeah. showing us that this is actually the opium. You yeah. have displayed the products here. This is the opium straw. Yeah. Hmm. And this opium tells more this, about this it. This is this is the real pure form of what is called opium. And uh, the so-called opium that we talk about and uh, uh, the kind of a NDPS substance it is. Now this is the uh, deadly dangerous kind of a substance. A half a gram of this or a, a small uh, even a small drop of this. Uh, what people do is uh, they put it on their tongue and uh, have a nice. Uh, uh, kick out of it and a good sleep out of it. So uh, this this costs about uh, 20 25,000 in the market. That's what they. I would say 20 25 because it depends on the demand and uh, how, this quantity is. Yes, it? This, this is about 25 grams. 25 grams and this uh, so roughly about a uh, thousand per gram is what would you say? And uh, this is a refined product coming out of the poppy straw. Okay. Wh who are the end users for something like this and? Uh, Transporting from there to here, long distance, obviously there is going to be vigil all over. Uh, it's a very profitable kind of a very profitable kind of a business. In fact, uh, one kg of this costs about uh, twenty thousand in Rajasthan, in Bamit, uh, ten to twenty thousand Rajasthan. But here they are quoting up to fifty thousand to one lakh twenty thousand, depending on the you know uh, time of the thing and availability of the thing. And when when things get tightened, the price goes up. When things, Demand and supply. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we are putting an average cost of about uh, 80 thousand to 1 lakh on this uh, thing. Uh, and uh, this product, again I repeat, this product is one of the most raw materials. And this can be used, uh, and this is used uh, as one of the ways in, uh, when, 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 we, when you boil your tea, and uh, you actually drop a few sprinkles of it, and uh, you actually powder it. Going back to some more election story now, NDTV's Maria Shakil spoke to top economist Surjit Bhalla about the Lok Sabha elections and what to expect. He predicts BJP could win over five seats in Tamil Nadu. And uh, as for BJP's 400 power uh, claim, Bhalla says there's a possibility that BJP could secure between 300 to 350 seats. He also says that the opposition has not done much um, and uh, that more jobs were created in the last five years. Listen in. Uh, so if the BJP has maxed in central India and northern India, so where are these additional 23, 25 or 35 seats coming from? Okay, this is also an important question. The argument, and that also is discussed well in the book. The argument is, okay, look, they maxed out, then isn't it very likely that they will lose some, let alone gain some? Look at the margins. Mm. They had very comfortable margins 
in North India, 30 percent, 40 percent, etc. So they can lose some of the margin, but they're not going to lose a seat. It's very unlikely that they will lose a seat. Second, where are they going to gain in North? Now that's a you know UP, etc. If you look at the state elections, there is room to grow for the BJP yeah. in North India by looking at the election results of the states. As I said, that the weighted average gain in terms of vote share for the BJP in the state elections is about 5%. That's not small. So therefore, they can. Now, what the BJP also understands, more than I do, more than you do, so they understand it very well, they need to make forays outside of North India. Hmm. And South India is their major, major target. Yes. Karnataka, they are pretty much maxed out. Yes, as 25 far as seats. Yeah. So it's Tamil Nadu is a think, big one. Do you think Tamil Nadu? No, I, I've been watching as a, as a, as a, as observer, as a political nut or whatever you want to call it. I've been following the Tamil Nadu election very, very closely, um, and both from the opposition side as well as from the PM Modi side. And I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised hmm. if in Tamil Nadu, hmm. of all places, hmm. they gain somewhere between five plus seats, the BJP, from zero. So you're saying Tamil Nadu, there's a possibility of five seats? At least. Five plus? Yes. Five plus in Tamil Nadu, okay. Kerala, and maybe one or two. You're still, you're of the opinion that the BJP is opening its account in Kerala? In Karnataka. Kerala. In Kerala, maybe one. I mean, but that, that won't make much difference. Maybe two. You know, it's very hard. Uh, my analysis in this book is not really at the ground level. If I were doing it now, I would do the ground level type of analysis and questions, etc. Time for a quick break on the show. More on the other side. Stay tuned. Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Mega India Block Rally in Jharkhand today. Ulgula Nyai Rally in Ranchi ahead of the second phase of polls. There will be repolling in 11 polling stations in Inner Manipur on the 22nd of April. Severe heat wave grips India above 43 degree temperature in 14 cities. Odisha's Bodh and Baripada record maximum temperature 45 to 45.2 degrees Celsius. In Maldives, litmus test for Moizu and his pro-China policy. Can President Moizu secure his tenure test for his hostile India policy as well? Go I do hope all of you are going to go out and cast your vote, and especially the youth of the country. And the youth and the corporate citizens, people who work in our urban centers and uh, companies, you know, we are the, uh, you know, in many ways, we actually are the generation which is going to build the country. So I do hope all of you get out and vote. It is not just our uh, responsibility, but it's also our core participation in building the future country of our dreams. And I am today pledging to vote. Uh, my vote is in Punjab uh, on 1st June. So I'm, I'm pledging here to vote and I do hope all of you do the same. So uh, I'm going to just sign this pledge to vote. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav, only on NDTV 24-7.
welcome to Lights Camera 6i. It was an absolute carnage, a proper hammering, a total annihilation call, whatever you want. The match number 35 of IPL was what dreams are made of. Had by the openers, Travis Head and Abhishek Sharma batted uh, in the fifth gear, bringing up a new IPL record of 125 for no loss in the power play. The highest number of runs scored in any T20 game in this stage. Delhi showed intent but fell short by 67 runs, unable to protect Kila Kotla. Sunrisers Hyderabad kept the party rolling with a dominant display with Travis Head and Abhishek Sharma smashing boundaries all over the park. The run feast wasn't over. Head went berserk, blasted a half century in 16 balls and continued the offensive attack of power hitting. Is absolute carnage. The Arun Jaitley Stadium witnessed history as Sunrisers Hyderabad smashed 125 rounds in the power play, breaking not just the IPL but the T20 power play record altogether. However, the Delhi spinners slammed the brakes on the SRA juggernaut, halting the record breaking run feast, Kuldeep Yadav taking 4 for 55 on the night. But Shabazz Ahmed continued the assault, notching up his maiden IPL 50 and taking SRH to a mammoth total of 266 runs, the highest scored in Delhi's Arunjetli Stadium. The Capitals openers attempted a counter-attack, but their promising start fizzled out as they were dismissed cheaply. So 16 runs but not the men who followed. McGough and Porel launched a stunning assault and rained down boundaries, smashing a massive 88 runs in the power play. Jake Fraser McGough feasted on the SRH bowlers, taking them to the cleaners, blazing his way to the third fastest IPL 50 in just 15 balls. Delhi were ahead in the asking rate, chasing a mammoth total. But the middle overs changed the game. The Capitals were pulled back between 9 and 14 overs. Mank Barkande's double strike tore through Delhi's middle order. And then Hyderabad's bowlers sealed the win. Markande and Natarajan's four-wicket haul took SRH to a 67-run win. They leapfrogged Kolkata to claim the second place on the league table. And here's a quick look at the scorecard. Uh, it will probably only tell you half the story, but here it is. Travis Head uh, was batting at 84 of 27, 26 balls in the six-over mark. And his opening partner... Um, Abhishek Sharma was scoring significantly higher. He was on 40 of 10 balls at that point. 125 runs were scored in the play. That was a record. Travis had going on to strike 59. Um, and Abhishek Sharma 46. But Sharma Ahmed coming in towards the uh, lower order scored an unbeaten 59 propelling uh, Hyderabad to uh, 266, 266 for 7. That actually was, is the Hyderabad score. We will flip the scorecard and show it to you. Uh, Kuldeep Yadav of uh, Delhi picking 4 for 55. Akshar Patel um, and Kuldeep Yadav striking the blows in the middle there. Uh, and that is what pulled things back a little for Hyderabad. The way they began, it looked like they could go and get past 300 runs. Um, when it came to Delhi, uh, there was a, a, a very good beginning by the Delhi Capitals, but they could not keep up the momentum, losing the match by 67 runs. Here's a quick look at the points table. Courtesy that win last night. Uh, uh, Hyderabad has leapfrogged Kolkata. They are in the second position on the league table now and uh, have 10 points on them. have Dharma Rakshit, the Hyderabad fan and Yathar Taluja, uh, Delhi Capitals fan, uh, to talk more about the match that was, uh, well, uh, uh, Dharma 125 for no loss at the end of six overs. 
and then 266 in the end does it look a bit ironic uh yes ma'am you know we thought uh sunrise hyderabad will dominate uh the capitals in arun jetle stadium but never thought you know they'll bang that in the power play itself and uh, even our bowlers, Natranjan, you know, Pat Cummins, Dhoni Shokumar, everyone has contributed for this win. Um, Yathat, uh, you know, when SRH was coming to Delhi in the form that they were, we knew that it would be very difficult for Delhi to uh, protect Kilya Kotla. But the way it was breached last night, how do you really react as a as a as a Delhi fan? Um, it probably can be classified as a mauling. I mean, for definitely the way Hyderabad has been playing throughout the tournament, the teams have got nightmares about how they come about with the game. But uh, to look with from the Delhi side, we were coming up with the confidence of two back-to-back -back wins. So we take that momentum with us. But when you see the score line of 130 already scoring in the power play, then somewhere uh, there you feel that you have kind of messed away. So uh, the way they breached the Kila Kotla, we returning to Kila was like after like good six games and you want to always start on a winning note. So that was not the formid formidable start which you were expecting to. But from there, pulling back the game from 130 to still taking it on uh, to score, like they were still like 200 in the 15th or 16th over. So we take a very positive from there. And also we were in the game till the very 8th over of the batting chase. We were like, we had a run rate of nearly 18, which was nearly incredible. So a lot went wrong, but uh, there were also a lot of limelight to, uh, you know, just focus on the positive. So we take that from this uh, loss and we move forward. Well, uh, let me also get in Rakesh Rao, the deputy editor of Hindu, uh, into the show. Rakesh, it was an exhibition of power hitting last night while uh, yeah. Travis Head was on fifth gear. His partner on the other end was significantly quicker. Abhishek Sharma yeah. at that point, six over mark that we are talking about, were batting at 40 of 10 balls. And I'll just bring up a tweet from... A uh, former Indian uh, uh, bowler, Munaf Patel, when he is talking about, he's actually questioning whether this boy can be included in the T20 World Cup team. What are your thoughts about it? No, I don't. I don't agree with him, Munaf. I mean, see, because you know, we we are we are actually living in a world where it's so easy to get excited by seeing one knock or two knocks. Come on, I mean, are we, I mean, we know he's good, no doubt about it. Let him, let him, you know, grow. Let him, you know, stay in the in the entire kind of a, you know, like, I mean, in, in, you know, in that kind of a form for a while. You know, we excited excited about Mayank's two spell now. You just see where he is. He's injured and he's got. The point is that it's great to see these guys show the kind of confidence that you normally wouldn't have seen, say, a few years earlier. But then these guys come prepared for it. They're backed by their team. And, and the way they just go and just hit like as though there's no tomorrow. That's all great. But then I don't think, I mean, I, I don't agree with him. But then having said that, that, you know, these two, I mean, these two openers went hammer and tongs. I mean, just imagine six overs and 125 on the board. That is something that at least I haven't seen ever in any, in any form. And then give credit to the DC also. Because see, if you see the cutoff at the 10 over mark, they were 158 for four. These guys were 138. Absolutely. So the difference between the two wasn't much. Hmm. It is just that thereafter they just cracked. But the point is that SRH is a team on a roll. And now things are just happening. I mean, it's like they're top six, they're seven and eight. Everybody bats. Delhi, the problem is their tail doesn't bat. Mm -hmm. Just sealed, you know, like yesterday, Rakesh. in the space of seven deliveries, they lost four wickets and that was the end of it. Rakesh, uh, Hyderabad leapfrogged Kolkata. They are now on second position in the league table. Given the form that they are in, um, would you hedge your bets on uh, Hyderabad winning this edition of the IPL? Difficult to say, Rika. Too early, again. Because once they reach the top four stage, then anything can happen. You know, it is just that winning that last match. You know, I mean, we have seen teams reaching the last four stage, even reaching the last last match, just one victory away. And then we don't even remember them. Only the winners are remembered. So, you know, you have teams like SRH doing very well. RR, 
RR and SRH were two teams, you know, whom I've been, I've, I just maintained from the day of the auction that these two teams have actually got the best lineup, the most balanced lineup, playing 11 and the options thereafter. No other team has it. Uh, KKR is looking fine, yes, but then they're also a sort of team that, that can be beaten. But looking at the form of SRH, look at the way they bat first. I haven't seen them really go after the you know uh, target, but give them the option to bat first and they know what to do. And yesterday, remember, Markram and Klassen didn't click. If these two guys had to stay there a bit longer, we would have seen 300 on the board. Uh, Rakesh, I will really have to ask you this question, you know, while Indian Premier League is a platform for Indian youngsters to shine and uh, uh, to be fair to them, a, a lot of them have been doing it over the years, but looking at this season, would you say that it has become a competition of, called Australia Got Talent? Because it's you can not say that. You can say that, seriously, I mean, because see the number of new names emerging. I've seen these kids playing in whites, you know, I've seen the, them in domestic competitions for so long. But look at the way, the moment they get into a space where they are representing their franchising, I mean, the confidence and the confidence with which they face the overseas bowlers. For me, that is the biggest takeaway. Repetitions don't matter to these kids. They just go there and they just go after them, be it batters, bowlers, whosoever. So that for me is the biggest takeaway. However, when it comes to the World Cup team, the playing 11, you'll still see 9, 10, 11, maybe all 11 guys. This is NDTV and you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello, Moto. Elections in Maldives, litmus test for Muizu and his pro-China policy. Big question is, can the president secure his tenure? Mega India Block Rally in Jharkhand today. The Ugulan Nyai Rally in Ranchi has been going to be attended by several top opposition leaders. Triangular contest in Rajasthan's Barmer, Congress versus BJP versus an independent candidate. Rao over Kejriwal's sugar level report, the Tihar report on the insulin denial. Tihar says the CM wasn't taking insulin. Amarmi party says loopholes in the report. Severe heatwave grips India above 43 degrees Celsius in 14 cities. Odisha's Budh and Baripada record maximum temperatures at 45.2 degrees Celsius.
The voting is underway in Maldives. People are voting for the parliamentary elections, which will test President Moise's tilt towards China and away from India, the luxury tourism hotspot's traditional benefactor. Now, this will be Moise's first major political test in today's parliamentary elections that will determine the extent of his control over the parliament. Remember, the elections are being held in 93 seats in total, and the opposition party, the Maldivian Democratic Party, with 41 seats in hand, currently dominates the People's Majlis or the country's parliament. I'm being joined by my colleague Ghazali, joining us with more details. Ghazali, now polling is underway in Maldives. Around 602 polling booths have been set up as well. What's the ground situation? See, uh, two countries are eyeing and closely watching these elections is India and China because since Moizu came to uh, became the president last year, his anti-India stance and getting closer to China has been criticized by the domestic parties because the local sentiments as per the reports is that his instance of asking Indian troops to leave Maldives has received a lot of backlash. Now. Uh, MDP, the Maldivian Democratic Party, from uh, which party there was ex-president Mr. Ibrahim Soli. He was ousted by Moizu in the last uh, presidential elections. So this time around, though Soli's party has got the majority in the parliament, in this elections it will test whether Soli's, the ex-president's party, will continue to sway over the parliament because Mr. Moizu, despite being the president, doesn't have the majority in the parliament and that that is a big challenge for him when it comes to passing ma major legislative changes. Uh, in a couple of, uh, couple of weeks ago, the financial intelligence unit of the Maldivian Monetary Department has also uh, leaked some reports associating Mr. Moizu with corruption, with financial ir irregularities in 2018. So those reports are also have also become a hot election topic there in Maldives. And it will have to be seen whether Mr. Soli's party regains the majority in parliament or Mr. Moizu's anti-India plank or his anti-India stance will sell in this election in his favour. Right, thank you, Ghazali, for bringing us uh, those details and contextualizing uh, the elections in Maldives for us. At this point, I'm being joined by Ahmed Aid, who's a journalist at uh, Adadu, which is an online media forum in Maldives. I'm also being joined by Ambassador Rajiv Bhatia, who's the former head of division in uh, the MEA. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, now, uh, in fact, Mr. Bhatia also was dealing with the Maldives uh, when he was the head of um, a division in the MEA. Uh, let me start off with uh, Mr. Ed. Thank you for joining us. How is the public's perception yeah, of Mizu and his party at the moment in Maldives? At the moment, uh, it's mixed, uh, to be honest, because uh, we have seen a lot of different uh, policies being brought forward. Uh, we can see the India policy being one of the most discussed policy here. Uh, I think the pro-China narrative has been also one of the policies that has been discussed. But in regards of today's uh, elections, I don't see as somebody who has been monitoring the situation closely, I don't see any of the parties gaining a major majority. I think it will be very tight. Uh, maybe 50-50. Right. Uh, let me open Ambassador Bhatia at this point. Ambassador Bhatia, now, is the pro-China policy going to cost Moizu's PNC the polls? Thank you very much. Uh, I also bring to you greetings of Gateway House, the think tank where I work. To answer your question, uh, I think uh, it would be best to wait for the results. Mm. Uh, we would know... Uh, because the context is a little bit complicated. When the presidential elections took place, Mr. Muizu's party won. Then this was followed by the election of the mayor, where his party lost. So now this is the third and final stage of the political match, where uh, the election is for the majlis or the National Assembly, uh, where, as your correspondent rightly pointed out, the previous ruling party still has majority. Mm. So the question open is whether people of Maldives, a majority of them, would support President Muizu's party or the uh, previous leader, uh, President Soli's party. Uh, essentially, two points uh, I think need to be appreciated. The political uh, environment is fractured. There are several groups and there is no consensus among them. And therefore, the second point, the important thing is what are the issues of concern for the people? And my reading and my perception is that, yes, seen from India, the India-China uh, equation is the major issue there. But more importantly, local issues, uh, 
you know, people's welfare, education, medical treatment, transport, connectivity, inflation, all this would also matter in this election because uh, this is the election uh, for the parliament. So we will have to wait and watch and uh, from the Indian point of view, hope that uh, uh, the country will give a mature verdict. Right. Uh, in fact, we'll come back to the point where, you know, this if the opposition wins, it could possibly be a boost for India. Uh, but before that, uh, Mr. Aid, like uh, Ambassador Bhatia was pointing out, there are several local issues also at hand. Uh, when it comes to the economy, do you think Moise's policies uh, caused the economy to take a hit in the Maldives? And if so, what are the challenges that uh, the new government that will be formed uh, are going to face? I think one of the most... Uh one of the biggest policies he saw during the election was that he wouldn't be one-sided, he wouldn't be pro any country, he would be pro Maldives. But after being in office, we have been seeing several major projects being given to Chinese uh, companies, and one after another, they have been given to Chinese companies. So there, there's questions been asked if there's any corruption involved. I think your correspondent uh, also mentioned about the uh, uh, financial intelligence unit uh, reports there has been no clearance about that from any of the government bodies so far we have asked many questions there has been no uh, transparency about these questions being asked and the whole uh, country is going to a poll today uh, with no transparency about a major corruption scandal mm. in the middle of the scandal we are going uh, to a court that will decide the future of the country Right, uh, Ambassador Bhatia, now uh, there are of course corruption charges against uh, Mizu's government and his leaders as well. Uh, but interestingly, from India's perspective, India has increased its investment in Maldives uh, and especially tourism has been a major point, point of contention. How do you see this playing out in the future? Uh, if, you know, either way that the election goes, if Mizu comes to power or if the opposition wins? So the first point here to note is that obviously New Delhi is having some trouble in dealing with the president. Uh, I think it is an open uh, public knowledge. Uh, and uh, despite all the provocations and even some insults uh, thrown in uh, New Delhi's direction, the government has continued to behave in a very uh, sober and mature manner towards Malay. Uh, clearly, uh, the tourist inflow from India into Maldives has uh, been impacted adversely and this has caused a great deal of concern to the tourism industry in Maldives. But I would like to make a broader point, which is that Maldives is our neighbor. It is uh, perhaps the smallest neighbor. Uh, you know, just to give you um, a hard figure, barely 3 lakh people are forming the total electorate for this election. So fundamentally, India's perspective is that the nation has to continue to win the hearts and souls of the people of Maldives. Uh, they have to appreciate that India is a friend. India is the first nearest friend. And India is a dependable right. friend. So effectively, uh, the hope is that people of Maldives voting for elections will recognize that uh, India means well. Uh, and they will vote uh, for parties that will carry forward a, a stronger relationship with India. Right. Uh, Mr. Aid, last comments from you. Now, the, another major question is that of the Indian crews and technicians that are stationed in Maldives, whom the Muizu government wanted to oust as well. Uh, what is the ground situation as far as that's concerned? Uh, the, the thing about that is we have many journalists and uh, the civil about the civilians being here to operate the technical people being here the governance has been asking a lot of questions about it because there has been no trans transparency about it they are even asking questions if it has been actually done because uh, it doesn't make sense for civilians to operate military vehicles so i think there's uh, for every promise president Puiz has made in his presidential run, people are asking if he's actually fulfilling those promises. So uh, I think the sh it has been shifted, the political landscape has been shifted over the past five months, but uh, it's just five months, so it could be too early to tell, but we have to wait and watch. Right.
for the reality. Right. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Ed and uh, Ambassador Bhatia for joining us and sharing your thoughts on this development. We'll, of course, continue tracking the story as the elections take place in Maldives. Prime Minister Modi is inaugurating uh, the 2550th Bhagwan Mahavi Nirvan Mahotsav at Bharat Mandabam. Let's take a look. We have talked और इस सारे मंथन से जो निकला अब 75 साल हो गए अब हम सब का दायित्व है कि हम उससे निकले हुए अमृत को लेकर के चलें विष से हम मुक्ति ले लें और इस अमृत काल को जी करके देखें वैश्विक संघर्षों के बीच देश युद्ध रत हो रहे हैं ऐसे में हमारे तीर्थंकरों की शिक्षाएं और भी महत्वपूर्ण हो गई है उन्होंने मानवता को वाद विवाद से बचाने के लिए अनेकांत वाद और शात वाद जैसे दर्शन दिए हैं अनेकांत वाद यानी एक विषय के अनेक पहलुओं को समझना दूसरों के दृष्टिकोण को भी देखने और स्वीकारने की उदारता वाला आस्था की ऐसी मुक्त व्याख्या यही तो भारत की विशेषता है और यही भारत का मानवता को संदेश है साथियों आज संघर्षों में फंसी दुनिया भारत से शांति की अपेक्षा कर रही है नए भारत के इस नई भूमिका का श्रेय हमारे बढ़ते सामर्थ्य और विदेश नीति को दिया जा रहा है लेकिन मैं आपको बताना चाहता हूं इसमें हमारी सांस्कृतिक छवि का बहुत बड़ा योगदान है आज भारत इस भूमिका में आया है क्योंकि आज हम सत्य और अहिंसा जैसे व्रतों को वैश्विक मंचों पर पूरे आत्मविश्वास से रखते हैं हम दुनिया को ये बताते हैं कि वैश्विक संकटों और संघर्षों का समाधान भारत की प्राचीन संस्कृति में है भारत की प्राचीन परंपरा में है इसलिए आज विरोधों में भी बटे विश्व के लिए भारत विश्व बंधु के रूप में अपनी जगह बना रहा है क्लाइमेट चेंज ऐसे संकटों के समाधान के लिए आज भारत ने मिशन लाइफ जैसे ग्लोबल मूवमेंट की नींव रखी है आज भारत ने विश्व को वन अर्थ वन फैमिली वन फ्यूचर का विजन दिया है क्लीन एनर्जी और सस्टेनेबल डेवलपमेंट के लिए हमने वन वर्ल्ड वन सन वन ग्रीड का रोडमैप दिया है there prime minister modi talking about the outline for a sustainable future remember india has been uh, has been in the forefront of the climate mission the prime minister they are talking about the one nation one india one policy we'll continue tracking these stories for now a short break after 5 years we are again getting an opportunity to exercise our right to vote this is a right which has been earned after a very long and hard struggle by our great leaders we must not waste this opportunity i have pledged that i will vote i have appealed to all my family members and friends to come out and vote for the development of our great nation Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand.
प्रेजेंट दी लोकसभा इलेक्शन As always, NDTV has its ear to the ground. With the biggest pie of 80 seats, all eyes will be on Uttar Pradesh. Will the Troika ensure the Modi umbrella unites all? It is the first election in Naya Kashmir since the scrapping of Article 370. Will the same number of lotuses bloom in the desert, or can Gehloth lend a helping hand to India? The BJP having maxed here with the only pillar standing of Chhinwada Fall. Can Didi once again withstand the saffron tie? Will BJP stay strong in its northeast bastion? Jhadu ka jadu or Modi magic can Congress gain lost ground in Punjab? Will Revanth Reddy be able to increase the Congress strength in Telangana this time? And in Andhra Pradesh, will the Jagannath be able to stop Chandra Babu Naidu and Pawan Kalyan? Can BJP win back its only stronghold in the south? Or will it be a Congress consolidation? Can BJP make a dent in the Dravidian dent? Now the Congress CEC meeting is underway in New Delhi. The meeting is over the Punjab Lok Sabha seats. Remember, the Congress is set to contest in all 13 Lok Sabha seats in Punjab, and the former Punjab CM Channi has been fielded from Jalandhar. Is what we're learning. A Congress has announced candidates on this on six Lok Sabha seats uh, so far. This is the latest information that we have for you on the broadcast. The CEC meeting is currently underway. I have my colleague Ashwarya joining us with more details. Ashwarya, take us through uh, the latest details uh, that are coming in from the CEC meeting. Uh, Uh, where we already know that the Congress is set to contest on 13 Lok Sabha seats in Punjab. Well, certainly it is the Congress President Malika Arjun Khadge, uh, Sonia Gandhi, along with other uh, key leaders of uh, the Punjab unit of uh, Congress party attending the uh, CC uh, at the Congress headquarters. Remember, it was the Congress party who already announced six out of 13 Lok Sabha seats in Punjab, including two sitting party MPs. A former Aam Aadmi Party MP and a former Chief Minister, uh, uh, who is a strong critic of uh, Chief Minister Bhagwant Mann, and a four-time MLA uh, as their party candidate for uh, six Lok Sabha constituencies. Now, for the remaining seven um, uh, constituencies in uh, Punjab, the CEC is underway, and uh, uh, we uh, will shortly get to know about who the names have been finalised. But remember, it is Aam Aadmi Party and Congress who are not in alliance in Punjab, and. Uh, Both the parties have fielded their uh, candidates, right. so it could be certainly a triangular uh, fight in Punjab. So certainly, in right. few uh, moments from now, after the Punjab CC, Bihar CC will also conclude. Sonia Gandhi will be leaving shortly from the Congress headquarters, and we'll right. talk about the new candidates of uh, the. Right, uh, right, Ashwar. Continue tracking uh, the CC meeting for us as it uh, uh, continues today. Shifting focus now, NDTV's Mara Shakil spoke to top economist Surjit Bala about the Lok Sabha elections and what to expect. He predicts BJP could win over five seats in Tamil Nadu and said the BJP could possibly win 300 to 350 seats. Take a look. So it's not a record-breaking election. I think many ways. If he wins the third election, it is a record-breaking election, record-equaling at least. and mind you you know around the world and that's a nice little discussion in the book for any leader to win three elections in a row is like a record breaking effort okay so let me come to my last question uh what is in it in this election for the opposition or the india bloc you know what can they do in order to improve or what forecast? have they done they haven't done much in order to win that's my major complaint if i were in the opposition look there's a lot of discussion which we haven't had time to go into as to the kind of games the false commentary games that the opposition is played in played with oh my god you know the modi promised 20 million jobs a year you can't find that anywhere okay or that employment is a big problem more jobs have been created in the last 5 years right than at any other 5 year period in indian history the rest of the world is saying india is doing very well and here you are some economists get together and say 
uh, GDP growth is vastly overstated. I mean, this is not, you know, whether the economists are doing it or the opposition is doing it, it doesn't help their credibility. So I think as an opposition, they should have had, you know, there isn't much they can do other than to be creative. We know that BJP is popular or the Modi is very, very popular. They could have come up with something that sticks rather than coming up with a number, like you mentioned, a CMIE, unemployment is... If BJP is in the range of 330 to 350, then the opposition is not really improving its tally. No, no, it's not. Congress is going below 2019 number. That's a very good question, okay? And let me put it just like I gave 70% chance that the BJP will get somewhere between 330 and 350. There is better than even chance that the Congress alone, hat ka chap, will be less than what they got in 2019. At least that's what the model says. The model says, you know, and model takes into account everything and nothing, if you will. It doesn't look at what's happening. It's just looking at a long, historical, 70-year time trend. And according to that, they should, the Congress should be getting about two percentage point less votes than they got last time. So something like 17 and a half percent or so is what the model is saying. And unless I'm given reasons to think that the model will be wrong, I have to stick with the model. So 4th of June, uh, your last word, there is going to be history that will be made in India. That history in the sense of three victories in a row, something we've all grown up with and, you know, I was quite alive when, <laughs> when uh, Nehru won the 62 election, but most of this population hasn't seen anything close to it. Uh, so if the BJP has maxed in central India and northern India, so where are these additional 23, 25 or 35 seats coming from? Okay, this is also an important question. The argument, and that also is discussed well in the book. The argument is, okay, look, they maxed out. Then isn't it very likely that they will lose some, let alone gain some? Look at the margins. They had very comfortable margins in North India, 30%, 40%, etc. So they can lose some of the margin, but they're not going to lose the seat. It's very unlikely that they will lose the seat. Second, where are they going to gain in North? Now that's a, you know, UP, etc. If you look at the state elections, there is room to grow for the BJP yeah. in North India by looking at the election results of the states. As I said, that the weighted average gain in terms of vote share for the BJP in the state elections is about 5%. That's not small. So therefore, they can. Now, what the BJP also understands, more than I do, more than you do, so they understand it very well, they need to make forays outside of North India. Hmm. And South India is their major, major target. Yes. Karnataka, they are pretty much maxed out. Yes, as 25 far as seats. Yeah. So it's Tamil Nadu is a big one. Do you think Tamil Nadu? No, I've, I've been watching as a, as, a, as, a, as, observer. as a political nut or whatever you want to call it. I've been following the Tamil Nadu election very, very closely. Um, and both from the opposition side as well as from the PM Modi side. And I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised hmm. if in Tamil Nadu, hmm. of all places, hmm. they gain somewhere between five plus seats, the BJP, from zero. So you're saying Tamil Nadu, there's a possibility of five seats? At least. Five plus? Yes. Five plus in Tamil Nadu, okay. Kerala, and maybe one or two. You're still, you're of the opinion that the BJP is opening its account in Kerala? In Karnataka. Kerala. In Kerala, maybe one. I mean, but that, that won't make much difference. Maybe two. You know, it's very hard. Uh, my analysis in this book is not really at the ground level. If I were doing it now, I would do the ground level type of analysis and questions, etc.
Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn, join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India was, you can count on us. After five years, we are again getting an opportunity to exercise our right to vote. This is a right which has been earned after a very long and hard struggle by our great leaders. We must not waste this opportunity. I have pledged that I will vote I have appealed to all my family members and friends to come out and vote for the development of our great nation. I have a right to decide who will run my country for the next five years and for that I need to vote. So I pledge to vote. Hello friends, welcome to another fresh episode of Tech with TG, your ultimate destination for everything related to tech. और ये एक ऐसा शो है जहां पे हम हर बार एक नए सफर की शुरुआत करते हैं ऑन आर वे टू एक्सप्लोर एंड लर्न अबाउट सम न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज ऑन आर वे और अगर हम कर सफर की बात कर ही रहे हैं हु डजेंट लाइक रोड ट्रिप्स स्पेशली द लॉन्ग वंस अब देखो मजा तो बहुत ज्यादा आता है बट एट द एंड जब आप फ्यूल कॉस्ट निकालते हो तो कई बार थोड़ा सा मूड ऑफ हो जाता है बिकॉज इट्स अ लॉट द मेन रीजन वी आर यूजिंग द ट्रेडिशनल कार्स जहां पे पेट्रोल या डीजल हमको भरना होता है यू नो वॉट कार्स में टेक्नोलॉजी बहुत ज्यादा तेजी से आ रही है वी सी ऑल दीज क्रेजी कटिंग एज टेक फीचर्स इन ऑल द लेटेस्ट व्हीकल्स और एक जो नई ब्रीड डेवलप हो रही है इट इज माई पर्सनल फेवरेट बिकॉज यहां पे हम बात कर रहे हैं बिजली की टॉकिंग अबाउट इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स दे आर सुपर फास्ट दे डोंट प्रोड्यूस एनी एमिशन कोई यहां पे शोर शराबा भी नहीं होता है एंड गुड फॉर द एनवायरमेंट इज वेल तो गाइज ईवी की स्पीड से आगे बढ़ते हैं एंड लेट्स टेक अ डाइव इन द फील्ड ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स इन दिस वीक्स टेक विद टी जी हेलो वन माई नेम इज गौरव ए के टेक्निकल गुरु जी जल्दी से आगे बढ़ते हैं चलिए शुरू करते हैं ओके तो चलो गाइज अभी काम की बात करते हैं आई मीन फॉर अ लॉन्ग 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 टाइम हम लोग ट्रेडिशनल पेट्रोल डीजल कार्स को और व्हीकल्स को यूज करते आ रहे हैं ऑल नाइस टू ड्राइव ऑल द सेंस ऑफ पावर द थ्रिल सब कुछ बहुत मजेदार है बट द ओनली प्रॉब्लम इज वॉट वी लीव बिहाइंड वंस वी ड्राइव हेड इज दिस थिक बबल of all dangerous gases coming out of our exhausts ab yahan pe sabse badi problem because it's not just about one or two cars it's about millions and millions of cars on a global scale ab aap imagine karo in big cities like delhi like mumbai jahan pe itni sari gaadiyan hain 
और पीछे जो ये एमिशंस छोड़ती जा रही हैं हाउ डेंजरस इट इज फॉर द एनवायरमेंट इमेजिन दिस बीइंग लाइक एन इनविजिबल ब्लैंकेट अराउंड आर प्लैनेट और उससे क्या होता है द हीट गेट्स ट्रैप्ड हम बात करते हैं ग्लोबल स्केल पे अबाउट राइज इन द ग्लोबल वार्मिंग टेम्परेचर्स बढ़ रहे हैं ग्लेशियर्स आर मेल्टिंग क्लाइमेट्स आर चेंजिंग ऑल हियर एंड देयर एंड इट्स नॉट रियली अ सस्टेनेबल सॉल्यूशन फॉर अ लॉन्ग टर्म मतलब मजा तो बहुत आता है बट वी जस्ट डू अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ थिंकिंग आपको मालूम चलेगा कि यार कितना नेगेटिव इंपैक्ट है इन सभी व्हीकल्स का हमारे प्लैनेट पे एंड सेकंड फैक्ट दैट ये जो फ्यूल्स हैं ये कौन सा हमेशा रहेंगे There would be a day जब खत्म हो जाएगा पेट्रोल या डीजल जो भी हम आज यूज कर रहे हैं उस दिन क्या होगा सो वी डेफिनेटली हैड दिस नीड टू डेवलप समथिंग एज एन ऑल्टरनेटिव एंड नॉट जस्ट एनी ऑल्टरनेटिव आई वुड से सस्टेनेबल ऑल्टरनेटिव और यहां से शुरुआत होती है अबाउट इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स वाइल्ड वी स्पीक अबाउट ईवीज आपके दिमाग में सवाल आएगा कि बिजली तो वो यूज करते ही हैं और ये बिजली कहीं से तो आएगी ही द बेस्ट पार्ट इज दैट वी कैन जेनरेट इलेक्ट्रिसिटी यूजिंग सस्टेनेबल सोर्सेज एंड रिन्यूएबल सोर्सेज थिंग्स लाइक सोलर एनर्जी थिंग्स लाइक विंड एनर्जी थिंग्स लाइक हाइड्रो एनर्जी मतलब हम बिना एनवायरमेंट को नुकसान पहुंचाए भी बिजली को प्रोड्यूस कर सकते हैं और उस बिजली से वी कैन ड्राइव आर इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स नाउ इमेजिन इफ यू हैव एन ईवी एंड द एनर्जी दैट इज बीइंग यूज टू चार्ज द बैटरी इज कमिंग फ्रॉम अ सोलर पैनल एट द एंड इट्स कंप्लीट सर्कल ऑफ सस्टेनेबिलिटी कि आप सोलर एनर्जी को यूज कर रहे हैं टू चार्ज योर बैटरीज एंड वंस यू चार्ज इट अप जब आप गाड़ी को चलाते हैं उस टाइम पे द कार इज नॉट इम्पैक्टिंग द प्लानट इन एनी नेगेटिव वे तो ये मैं बोलूंगा ईवीज के लिए एक बहुत अच्छा प्लस पॉइंट है वेल well, पता है माइनस पॉइंट क्या था इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल्स के करंट स्टेट में कुछ चैलेंजेस हैं डिस्पाइट एडवांसमेंट्स बैटरी टेक्नोलॉजी अभी भी स्ट्रगल करती है विद इश्यूज जैसे कि लिमिटेड रेंज रेंज एंजाइटी और डेग्रेडेशन ओवर टाइम इवन दो रनिंग कॉस्ट कम रहते हैं हाई अपफ्रंट कॉस्ट कुछ कंज्यूमर्स को रोक देते हैं फ्रॉम परचेजिंग दीज कार्स Additionally, when we say that EVs are environmentally friendly, the batteries like lithium-ion batteries के production की sustainability and pollution को question किया जा सकता है. Materials जैसे lithium और cobalt की mining, साथ ही energy-intensive manufacturing processes काफी ecological concerns pose करते हैं. इन चैलेंजेस को एड्रेस करना जरूरी है फॉर वाइड स्प्रेड ईवी अडॉप्शन और एक सच में sustainable transportation future के लिए. Now guys, believe it or not. EVs की शुरुआत अभी कल परसों नहीं हुई है वी गो बैक हंड्रेड ऑफ इयर्स अगो क्योंकि जब 1834 में इलेक्ट्रिक मोटर को इन्वेंट किया गया विद टाइम द आइडिया केम इन ऑफ यूजिंग दिस मोटर इन अ व्हीकल आई मीन बहुत सारे इन्वेंटर्स ने अलग अलग आइडिया सामने रखे द आइडिया वॉज टू हैव दिस कार जहां पे मोटर से व्हील्स में एनर्जी जा रही है एंड वी कैन एंजॉय एकदम स्मूथ नॉइसलेस राइड बट देन इन पैरल द ट्रेडिशनल इंटरनल कम्बेशन इंजन वाली जो गाड़ियां थी वो भी डेवलप हो रही थी एंड दे गॉट मोर पॉपुलरिटी बिकॉज वॉज इजियर एट द सेम टाइम द ऑयल वॉज डिस्कवर्ड मतलब यू नो हाउ इट वॉज बट उसके बाद क्या हुआ फास्ट फॉरवर्ड कैलिफोर्निया में थोड़ा सा एक थॉट डेवलप होता है अबाउट दिस एनवायरमेंट एंड वहां पे द आइडिया वॉज दैट हाउ डू वी मेक द एयर क्लीनर एंड विद टाइम शुरुआत होती है बहुत सारी कंपनीज की ब्रांड्स लाइक टेस्ला उस टाइम पे ईवीज वर नॉट रियली थिंग ऑफ द पास्ट उस टाइम पे ईवीज वर ऑल लाइक नो पैक्ड विद टेक्नोलॉजी दिस हाई एंड हाई परफॉर्मेंस पैक्ड विद फीचर्स एक ऐसी कार जिसको हर कोई लेना चाहता है विद टाइम केम द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ द चार्जिंग नेटवर्क कार्स में नए नए फीचर्स एड हो गए एंड टूडे ऑलमोस्ट ऑल द ब्रांड्स ग्लोबली राइट फ्रॉम हियर टू ऑल द वे अप हियर I mean, I'm talking about Rolls Royce as well. All the brands they have an electric vehicle in their fleet. Well, almost. और यहाँ पे अब EV popularity बहुत ज़्यादा gain करने वाली है. No, अभी आपके दिमाग में I'm sure क्या आ रहा होगा? You must be comparing कि एक traditional internal combustion engine वाली जो car है, how does that compare to an EV? I mean, कौन से parts 
किस गाड़ी में होते हैं किस गाड़ी में नहीं होते हैं हाउ एग्जैक्टली इज द फंक्शनैलिटी ऑफ अ कार अब देखो पहिए की जगह पे तो पहिए ही रहेंगे स्टेयरिंग व्हील की जगह पे स्टेयरिंग व्हील ही होगा दरवाजे अपनी जगह पे हैं सीट्स अपनी जगह पे हैं बट द कंप्लीट फंक्शनैलिटी और आई वुड से द कंप्लीट साइंस बिहाइंड दैट कार इज वेरी डिफरेंट अगर हम कंपेयर करते हैं एक ईवी को एक ट्रेडिशनल कार से तो व्हाट हैपन्स इन ट्रेडिशनल कार बेसिकली एक केमिकल रिएक्शन को हम कन्वर्ट करते हैं इन टू अ रोटेशनल फोर्स मतलब जो आपका फ्यूल है उसमें आग लगी अ वेरी कंट्रोल्ड एक्सप्लोजन अक्रॉस मल्टीपल सिलेंडर्स ऑफ द इंजन वहां से पिस्टन मूव करता है आप क्रैंक शाफ्ट के थ्रू पावर को आगे भेजते हैं देन यू हैव अ ट्रांसमिशन उसके बाद में इवेंचुअली जो पावर है वो आपके व्हील तक जाती है और पहिया घूमता है इट हैज लॉट्स ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स पार्ट्स हर एक गाड़ी पे डिपेंड करता है मे बी योर्स इज अ फोर सिलेंडर और मे बी अ सिक्स सिलेंडर और मे बी अ वी ट्वेल्व आई मीन इट्स अ वेरी कॉम्प्लेक्स सिस्टम ऑल टुगेदर और जितने ज्यादा पार्ट्स हैं मेंटेनेंस उतनी ही ज्यादा है और uh, खराब होने के चांसेस भी उतनी ही ज्यादा है इफ यू लुक अबाउट एन ई वी इट्स वेरी सिंपल इट हैज अज अरे ऑफ बैटरी सेल्स मतलब बैटरी तो चाहिए ऑफकोर्स एंड देन दे इज अ मोटर तो बेसिकली दे इज अ पावर कंट्रोलर जो बैटरी से पावर लेता है मोटर्स में पावर भेजता है एंड दीज मोटर्स यू नो दे वर्क ऑन द प्रिंसिपल ऑफ इलेक्ट्रो मैग्नेटिज्म जहां पर बड़े आराम से मोटर घूमती है और साथ में आपका पहिया भी घूम जाता है बिकॉज यहां पर बहुत कम पार्ट होते हैं चांसेस ऑफ एनी वेर एंड टेयर और मे बी एनी मेंटेनेंस इज वेरी लो कंपेयर टू अ ट्रेडिशनल कार और मजे की बात दीज ईवीज दे आर वेरी स्मार्ट बिकॉज दे हैव समथिंग कॉल्ड एज रीजेनरेटिव ब्रेकिंग जिसमें कॉन्सेप्ट कुछ ऐसा है कि जब आप कार को रोकते हैं तो उस टाइम पे दिस मोटर बैटरी में पावर को वापस भेज देती है फॉर यू टू गेट सम मोर रेंज सम मोर कैपेसिटी फ्रॉम दैट सेम बैटरी दैट यू हैड तो इट्स अ कंप्लीट डिफरेंट कंस्ट्रक्शन ऑल टुगेदर बट मैं इतना बोलूंगा दैट ईवीज आर मोर सिंपलर एट द सेम टाइम मच मोर एफिशिएंट इज वेल बट सबसे बड़ा सवाल नॉर्मल कार्स के लिए यू हैव अरे ऑफ पेट्रोल स्टेशन ऑल अराउंड द कंट्री जहां पे आप बड़े आराम से जाते हैं और बोलते हैं भैया टैंक फुल कर देना ईवी को भरेंगे कहां पे ब्रेक के बाद आपको बताने वाला हूं दैट हाउ एग्जैक्टली इज द करेंट सिचुएशन ऑफ ईवी राइट नाउ इन द कंट्री एंड हाउ डज द फ्यूचर लुक लाइक एवरीथिंग कमिंग अवे राइट आफ्टर द शॉर्ट ब्रेक Lok Sabha elections as always NDTV has its ear to the ground with the biggest pie of 80 seats all eyes will be on Uttar Pradesh will the troika ensure the modi umbrella unites all it is the first election in naya kashmir since the scrapping of article 370 will the same number of lotuses bloom in the desert or can gehlot lend a helping hand to india the bjp having maxed here with the only pillar standing of chhindwara fall can didi once again withstand the sacred tie will bjp stay strong in its northeast bastion jhadu ka jadu aur modi magic can congress gain lost ground in punjab will revanth reddy be able to increase the congress strength in telangana this time and in andhra pradesh will the jagannath be able to stop chandra babu naidu and pavan kalyan can bjp win back its only strong hold in the south Or will it be a Congress consolidation? Can BJP make a dent in the Dravidian den? A debate has many facets. Perhaps no one right answer. Left, right, and center. Conversations that get to the core of the debate. Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day this lecture hall will be made of code and driverless cars would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swasth India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones.
And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inaction. Hello friends, welcome back after the break to your favorite show about technology. It's Tech with TG, where my name is Gaurav. And in this episode, we were talking about EVs. Yes, electric vehicles. Now, the question is that uh, EVs are being developed, but what exactly are the set of ingredients that we need to make sure that EVs become a huge success? तो मेरे कुछ पॉइंट्स हैं जरा उन पे ध्यान देना बिकॉज आप अपना कंट्रीब्यूशन भी दे सकते हो सी सबसे पहले व्हाट वी नीड इज बेस्ट इन क्लास पब्लिक चार्जिंग नेटवर्क क्योंकि नॉट नेसेसरीली आप ईवीज को अपने घर पे चार्ज कर पाएंगे या अपने ऑफिस में चार्ज कर पाएंगे कर सकते हैं बट देन चांसेस आर नॉट रियली इन योर फेवर तो वॉट वी वुड नीड इज अ नेटवर्क जहां पर हमको पता है दैट ये yes, we have multiple charging stations spread across the cities across the country jaisa jab aap ghar se bahar nikalte ho and you are certain ki aapko petrol pump to mil hi jayega you know every few kilometers we need the kind of network same thing for the evs as well second thing it's not just about charging it's about green charging I mean, अगर आप कोयला जला के बिजली बना रहे हो और उस बिजली से अपनी ईवी को चार्ज कर रहे हो इट रियली यू नो डिस्ट्रॉयज द पर्पज सो कितना अच्छा हो अगर हम सोलर एनर्जी को या विंड एनर्जी को यूज कर पाए टू चार्ज दीज ईवीज इमेजिन अ स्मॉल चार्जिंग नेटवर्क जिसके ऊपर सोलर पैनल्स लगे हैं और वो वहीं से उस बिजली को प्रोड्यूस करता है जिससे इवेंचुअली वो ईवीज को चार्ज करता है हाउ सस्टेनेबल वी नीड मोर ऑफ दीज स्प्रेड अक्रॉस अगेन एज ऐसे बहुत ज्यादा होने चाहिए एंड नॉट जस्ट दैट we uh, also need to think about uh, our villages as well because evs na sirf delhi ya bombay mein chalne wali hain wo hamare pure desh bhar mein chalne wali hain we need to develop bharat that way ki hamara country ek ev friendly country bane ab uske liye agar hum baat karte hain villages ki to yahan pe power could be a challenge but then again as i said these stand alone mobile charging units जहां पे दे आर प्रोड्यूसिंग देयर ओन इलेक्ट्रिसिटी माइट कम एज अ नाइस सोल्यूशन इसके अलावा आई थिंक गवर्नमेंट इज डूइंग अ लॉट टू बिगिन विद बट इट आल्सो नीड्स टू इन्वेस्ट लॉट मोर टूवर्ड्स ईवीज आई मीन पॉलिसीज लाइक हो सकता है इन द फ्री वेज यू वुड हैव ईवी डेडिकेटेड लेन्स जहां पे आपको प्रायोरिटी मिल जाए यू वुड एंजॉय दैट और मे बी सम मोर इंसेंटिव ऑन परचेज ऑफ एन इलेक्ट्रिक व्हीकल या मे बी गिविंग सम इंसेंटिव टू ब्रांड्स हु आर ट्राइंग टू मैन्युफैक्चर देर ईवीज आई मीन इफ दिस अ नाइस इको सिस्टम ऑल टूगेदर फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट वहां से भी ईवी को बहुत ज्यादा पुश मिलेगा एंड एट द एंड इट्स नॉट जस्ट अबाउट द गवर्नमेंट इट्स आल्सो अबाउट द प्राइवेट प्लेयर्स एज वेल बिकॉज उनको भी स्टेप्स लेने होंगे इंश्योरिंग uh, कि हमको ऑल टुगेदर एक बहुत अच्छा ईवी का इकोसिस्टम मिले सो डेफिनेटली नीड टू हैव प्राइवेट प्लेयर्स जो इन्वेस्ट करेंगे इन डेवलपिंग ऑल दीज चार्जिंग नेटवर्क मे बी डेवलपिंग द कार्स दम सेल्व सो दैट ऑल टूगेदर वी हैव अ रॉबर्स नेटवर्क फ्रेंड जस्ट थिंक अबाउट इट कि जब ये ईवीज को लेके हम काफी डेवलपमेंट कर लेंगे एंड ऑल टूगेदर जब हम देखेंगे रोड पे काफी सारी ईवीज को चलते हुए इट वुड एड इन टू आर कंट्रीज इकोनॉमी हमको उतना फ्यूअल इंपोर्ट नहीं करना पड़ेगा बिकॉज एज एज अ कंट्री वी इंपोर्ट दीज फ्यूअल्स हम वहां पैसे बचाएंगे वो पैसे हम कहीं और इन्वेस्ट कर सकते हैं डेवलपिंग इवन अमेजिंग रोड्स यू नो हाउ गुड रोड्स वी हैव दीज डेज तो वो और ज्यादा बेहतर हो सकते हैं आई मीन मनी इज सेव एट द एंड वी एज कंज्यूमर्स वी वुड स्पेंड अ फ्रैक्शन ऑफ वॉट वी स्पेंड टूडे मतलब आज हम जितना खर्चा कर देते हैं ऑन आर फ्यूअल्स with evs it's very economical it's good for the environment it's good for us it's good for everyone and that's why i say that evs they need to be the future now guys speaking of evs this is what i drive on most regular times i mean this is the all new audi q8 e-tron and 
मैं बोलूंगा इसने मेरी लाइफ में एक नया चेंज ला दिया बिकॉज वेन एवर आई एम ऑन द स्ट्रीट I feel that I am not adding towards the pollution. I am driving a car which is completely electric, and I am charging this car using a network of solar panels. So basically, मुझे पता है that number one, this is not too expensive to drive. At the same time, it's sustainable for the environment as well. And guys, to be honest, trust me. Before I made this jump towards EVs, even I was skeptical. कि यार, you know, power कितनी होगी, या range कितनी होगी, या charge करने में time कितना लगेगा. But let me tell you, this car completely changed the perspective. I mean, the range of more than 450 kilometers, and no matter how I push it, it's very good for city drives and in fact for highways as well. At the same time, guys, the power that this car has. feels nothing short of a supercar to be honest at the same time yahan pe the fast charging if i am using it as a fast charger in within 30 minutes it can go from 10% all the way to 80% which is really phenomenal and i mean just look at it it looks like a normal car looks like a typical car but the magic is all inside because andar se it uh, has no engine it has no moving parts it is essentially an electric car with batteries and motors put together so guys this is what the future looks like this is what we all should aim for that going forward uh, we should have more and more evs we should have more and more of these uh, charging networks taki hum sab log ek sath environment ki taraf kuch interesting kar paye and as a fact let me tell you if you are thinking that evs are really expensive well that's not the case because You have options available across the price range. आपको बजट में कार चाहिए वहां पे भी यू कैन गेट एन ईवी इफ यू वॉन्ट अ प्रीमियम फ्लैगशिप एक्सपीरियंस जस्ट लाइक दिस ऑल न्यू क्यू एट इट्रॉन यू हैव ईवीज इन दिस सेगमेंट इज वेल सो आपके ऊपर डिपेंड करता है द काइंड ऑफ कार यू वॉन्ट टू बाय यू हैव ऑल द ऑप्शन अवेलेबल एंड इफ यू टेक दिस स्मॉल स्टेप विद ऑल ऑफ द स्टेप्स कंबाइंड जो हम सब मिलकर लेने वाले हैं विल डेफिनेटली क्रिएट एन इम्पैक्ट और शायद हम एनवायरनमेंट को और अच्छे से प्रोटेक्ट करते हुए हमारी जेब में रखे पैसों को भी प्रोटेक्ट जरूर कर पाएंगे तो गाइज दे यू हैव इट एवरीथिंग अबाउट ईवीज इन दिस वीक्स एपिसोड ऑफ योर फेवरेट शो टेक विद टीजी इफ यू हैव एनी सजेशन एनी फीडबैक्स एनी क्वेश्चन यू नो द ई मेल इट्स टी जी एट द रेट एन डी टी वी डॉट कॉम स्टे ट्यून्ड मुझे ई मेल भेजना मैं उनकी मिलकर रिप्लाई भी करूंगा और आपके लिए प्रिपेयर करूंगा अगले वीक से पहले एक और इंटरेस्टिंग एपिसोड जिसको आप एंजॉय कर पाएंगे अपने स्क्रीन पे सी यू ऑल नेक्स्ट वीक हैव अ गुड डे Now NDTV's Mara Shakil spoke to top economist Surjit Bala about the Lok Sabha elections and what to expect. He predicts BJP could win over 5 seats in Tamil Nadu and said the BJP could possibly win 300 to 350 seats. Take a look. So it's not a record breaking election. I think in many ways if he wins the third election it is a record breaking election. Record equaling at least. And mind you you know around the world and that's a nice little discussion in the book for any leader to win three elections in a row is like a record breaking effort okay so let me come to my last question uh what is in it in this election for the opposition or the india bloc you know what can they do in order to improve or the what forecast what have they done they haven't done much in order to win that's my major complaint if i were in the opposition look there's a lot of discussion which we haven't had time to go into as to the kind of games the false commentary games that the opposition is played in played with oh my god you know the modi promised 20 million jobs a year you can't find that anywhere okay or that employment is a big problem more jobs have been created in the last 5 years right then at any other 5 year period in 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 history the rest of the world is saying india is doing very well and here you are some economists get together and say uh, gdp growth is vastly overstated i mean this is not 
you know, whether the economists are doing it or the opposition is doing it, it doesn't help their credibility. So I think as an opposition, they should have had, you know, there isn't much they can do other than to be creative. We know that BJP is popular or the Modi is very, very popular. They could have come up with something that sticks rather than coming up with a number, like you mentioned, a CMIE, unemployment is... If BJP is in the range of 330 to 350, then the opposition is not really improving its tally. No, no, it's not. Congress is going below 2019 number. That's a very good question, okay? And let me put it just like I gave 70% chance that the BJP will get somewhere between 330 and 350. There is better than even chance that the Congress alone, Hat Ka Chap, will be less than what they got in 2019. At least that's what the model says. The model says, you know, and model takes into account everything and nothing, if you will. It doesn't look at what's happening. It's just looking at a long, historical, 70-year time trend. And according to that, they should, the Congress should be getting about two percentage point less votes than they got last time. So something like 17 and a half percent or so is what the model is saying. And unless I'm given reasons to think that the model will be wrong, I have to stick with the model. So 4th of June, uh, your last word, there is going to be history that will be made in India. That history in the sense of three victories in a row, something we've all grown up with and, you know, I was quite alive when, <laughs> when uh, Nehru won the 62 election, but most of this population hasn't seen anything close to it. Uh, so if the BJP has maxed in central India and northern India, so where are these additional 23, 25 or 35 seats coming from? Okay, this is also an important question. The argument, and that also is discussed well in the book. The argument is, okay, look, they maxed out. Then isn't it very likely that they will lose some, let alone gain some? Look at the margins. Mm. They had very comfortable margins in North India, 30%, 40%, etc. So they can lose some of the margin, but they're not going to lose the seat. It's very unlikely that they will lose the seat. Second, where are they going to gain in north? Now that's a, you know, UP, etc. If you look at the state elections, there is room to grow for the BJP yeah. in North India by looking at the election results of the states. As I said, that the weighted average gain in terms of vote share for the BJP in the state elections is about 5%. That's not small. So therefore, they can. Now, what the BJP also understands, well, more than I do, more than you do, so they understand it very well, they need to make forays outside of North India. Hmm. And South India is their major, major target. Yes. Karnataka, they are pretty much maxed out. Yes, as 25 seats. Yeah. So it's Tamil Nadu is a think, big one. Do you think... Tamil no, I, I've been watching as a, as, a, as, a, as, observer. as a political nut or whatever you want to call it. I've been following the Tamil Nadu election very, very closely. Um, and both from the opposition side as well as from the PM Modi side. Hmm. And I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised hmm. if in Tamil Nadu, hmm. of all places, hmm. they gain somewhere between five plus seats, the BJP from zero. So you're saying Tamil Nadu, there's a possibility of five seats? At least. Five plus? Yes. Five plus in Tamil Nadu, okay. Kerala and maybe one or two. You're still, you're of the opinion that the BJP is opening its account in Kerala? In Karnataka? Kerala. In Kerala, maybe one. I mean, that, that won't make much difference. Maybe two. You know, it's very hard. Uh, my analysis in this book is not really at the ground level. If I were doing it now, I would do the ground level type of analysis and questions, etc.
As citizens of this great nation, we have the power to shape its future. And one of the most crucial ways we can do that is by casting our vote. It's not just a right for every citizen, it's a responsibility. A responsibility to ourselves, to our communities, and to our country. So, I urge all of you to exercise your right to vote. I always ensure that I fulfill this duty to our country. In our country, we choose our leaders, we decide who is going to be ruling the country, uh, and it is something which is both a fantastic right, privilege, and we should also see it as our constitutional duty. So this election, I am going to be there, and I hope you all will join me in casting your vote too. IPL का हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज तरफ एनडी टीवी पर The biggest carnival of democracy India's general election Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat trick The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge and the southern parties are standing their ground. As this is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello, Moto. News at noon. I'm your host Rika Roy. Over the next hour, we'll dive into all the top happenings in India and across the globe. But first, here are the headlines at the start. Amid the Lok Sabha election 2024, the opposition's India bloc will be holding a Nyay Ulgulan rally in Ranchi today. Rahul Gandhi, Akhilesh Yadav, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's wife Sunita and former Jharkhand Chief Minister's wife, uh, Kalpana, likely to attend the rally. <coughs> Home Minister Amit Shah is on a poll campaign in Bengal. He will hold rally in Darjeeling for BJP candidate Raju Bishta. It is a triangular contest in Barmer, Congress versus BJP versus the independent candidate. Union Minister Kailash Chaudhary seeks second term. Amidst the row over Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal's diabetes treatment and request for insulin in Tihar jail, the jail authorities say the Delhi CM was neither advised any insulin nor any requirement of it. AAP claims Tihar is trying to kill Kejriwal. Voting is on in the fourth multi-party parliamentary election in Maldives that is seen as a litmus test for pro-China President Mohamed Muizu's anti-India policy. India Bloc is holding a mega rally today in Ranchi. Leaders from several political parties, including Walikarjun Kharge, Rahul Gandhi, Lalu Prasad Yadav, 
फारूक अब्दुल्ला अखिलेश यादव सुनीता केजरीवाल द वाइफ ऑफ डेली सी एम अरविंद केजरीवाल आर लाइकली टू ज्वाइन इन द ऑपोजिशन इंडिया ब्लॉक्स उलगुलन न्याय रैली लेड बाय जे एम एम द रैली विल बी हेल्ड इन झारखंड कैपिटल रांची लेट्स लेट्स गो ओवर टू आर कॉलीग प्रभाकर हु इज देयर एट द रैली प्रभाकर tell us you know what's the significant significance of uh, this rally in ranchi and uh, one understands that this is uh, a first of its kind that's happening there so many opposition leaders getting together yeah it's a mega show of strength for the india alliance india alliance as we call it and, and and it had been uh, pre announced when the meeting happened uh, the india alliance leaders had met in delhi they had already announced the date for this particular rally today this rally is happening in ranchi which is at the prabhat tara maidan and all the senior leaders of india alliance including uh, including the, the 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 congress president balikarvan khadge tsp yadav uh, uh, akhilesh yadav uh, sunita kejriwal the wife of uh, delhi chief minister and also the punjab chief minister there also and left leaders of course uh, they are all be there uh, the jharkhand cm would be uh, hosting this rally and it would be a show of strength and remember it becomes very crucial for the india alliance because as for the states of bihar and jharkhand are concerned they have not been able to finalize uh, the name of the candidates or the or the seats even as to which seats the the congress and the jmm or for that matter rjd would be contesting in bihar so these leaders would also be meeting one to one and they would be announcing these names uh, as 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 a meeting of the congress party is held today in delhi so at ranchi also it would be a it would Prabhakar, be a, a, is there of, a the, chance? of the record meeting where they would actually finally decide the poll strategy prabhakar is there a chance that kalpana soren the wife of uh, uh, mr soren who is who has been incarcerated now uh, be projected as the face of uh, of uh, the india block in uh, in in ranchi she she already is a de facto uh, face of india block in ranchi uh, champai suren who happens to the chief minister who has taken the chair after hemant suren was sent to jail it is it is it is uh, it, it is well known in the political circle of jharkhand that he he is his merely uh, one who takes command from kalpana suren so kalpana suren is the is, is the person who is actually calling shots as far as the jharkhand is concerned as far as india block politics uh, in 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 jharkhand is concerned and we also have confirmation that lalu prasad yadav is skipping this meeting he is not keeping well so lalu prasad yadav would not be attending the meeting but his son tejasvi certainly would be there in the helm of the face Right thank you very much uh, for joining us with all those details do keep a track of what's happening and we will get back to you meanwhile here's what uh, the uh, political the leaders from different political parties reaching ranchi had to say about what they are looking at as the outcome of this mega rally in ranchi सच बस यही है कि ये तानाशाही के खिलाफ हमें लड़ाई लड़ेंगे जिस तरीके से जनप्रतिनिधि चुनकर आए हेमंत सोरेन जी हों अरविंद केजरीवाल जी हों उन पर ई डी आई टी सी बी आई इन सब तरीके की जांच लगाकर उनको जेल में डालने का काम किया है निर्दोष लोगों को जेल में डाल रहे हैं क्योंकि जस्ट उनकी गुनाह क्या है वो इस केंद्र सरकार की तानाशाही के खिलाफ लड़ रहे हैं तो अगर आपने फेज वन का चुनाव देखा होगा तो उसी से आपको स्पष्ट हो गया होगा कि अब ये प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी का एज अ प्रधानमंत्री आखिरी चुनाव है ये बहुत बड़ी रैली है और मुझे नहीं लगता कि झारखंड में इतनी बड़ी रैली कभी हुई होगी और स्वतः लोग आ रहे हैं इस महारैली में क्योंकि यहाँ पे चूँकि मान्य हेमंत सोरेन जी की बात है और जनता उनके लिए उमड़ पड़ रही है और इंडिया गठबंधन एक साथ है इस रैली की सफलता का हमें पूरा विश्वास है और सभी लोगों को जो मान्य हेमंत सोरेन जी के साथ है जो अन्याय के खिलाफ है वो आज इस रैली में आपको दिखेंगे पूरे देश भर के तमाम नेता आ रहे हैं और झारखंड झुकेगा नहीं इंडिया रुकेगा नहीं ये रैली जो है वो भारत के संविधान को बचाने के लिए भारत के लोकतंत्र को बचाने के लिए तीन बार के चुने हुए मुख्यमंत्री को आपने जेल में डाल दिया अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को उनको इंसुलिन नहीं दे रहे हैं जो लोगों की दवाओं का इंतजाम करते हैं उनको आज आप दवाओं का इंतजाम नहीं कर रहे हैं उनके जीवन के साथ आप खिलवाड़ कर रहे हैं एक झारखंड के निर्वाचित मुख्यमंत्री को आपने उनके पद पर रहते हुए उनको जेल में डाल दिया तो ये जो तानाशाही पूरे देश में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने मोदी जी की सरकार ने 
कायम कर रखी है उसको उखाड़ने के लिए आज हम सब लोग रांची में इकट्ठा हो रहे हैं Now, Union Minister Amit Shah will campaign in Darjeeling today for BJP MP Raju Bishta, who has repeated, uh, who has been repeated as a candidate from the seat. Amit Shah will address a rally at Gorkha Stadium in Lebong, which is near Darjeeling. Last time, Raju Bishta had won with the highest margin in Bengal, with him uh, being ahead of the runner-up by more than four lakh votes. This time, the TMC has fielded Gopal Lama. A local face, while the Congress has fielded Delhi University Professor Dr. Munish Tamang. Darjeeling is a unique Lok Sabha constituency, as it includes assembly segments of Darjeeling Hills and uh, Siliguri, as well as the Terai region in the plains and foothills. Amit Shah uh, is there in Darjeeling today, and my colleague Saurab Gupta uh, is there in Lebong as well. Saurab, uh, tell us uh, what is the outlook there? You've been talking about this being. a complex constituency so far as the voters are concerned and a large part of them is perhaps uh, um, the uh, are perhaps supporters of the bhartiya janata party well you know obviously uh, the dynamics of the darjeeling constituency is very different from the rest of the state here a difference that you know सौरभ योर ऑडियो लाइन सीम्स टू बी अट पैची वी विल ट्राई गेटिंग यू बैक वंस अगेन So we are talking about that mega rally of Amit Shah in the Darjeeling district in Lebong at a football stadium today to woo voters of the Darjeeling and Terai region, which has traditionally also got a lot of BJP supporters. Sir, we were talking about the dynamics of the region and why a large part of the voters here are considered to be. the supporters of bhartiya janata party yuta pura mari rakho jo side bhi that's right you know in fact the lead last time was 4 lakh votes and this time the bhartiya janata party hopes to hopes to keep at least most of that lead even though the uh, you know the understanding is that because parties like the trinamool congress have fielded a local face and that it's uh, you know the gta uh, elections that uh, saw uh, you know anit tapa emerge as uh, you know numero uno uh, perhaps the campaign in the hills will uh, bear some fruit for the trinamool will it be enough to make up a 4 lakh both speed very unlikely according to most poll experts so the trinamool of course is betting on that but otherwise darjeeling is something that's been a bit of a safe seat in bengal for the bjp i mean people like jaswant singh uh, ss aluwalia uh, have been mps from this seat so there are several issues that uh, the center can resolve as far as the aspirations of the people of darjeeling are concerned in fact uh, this ground the lebong uh, you know the gorkha stadium ground in lebong is also situated at a very picturesque place and amit shah's chopper right now we are being given to understand was delayed because of the weather in fact you can see uh, the weather is still not completely clear uh, but obviously uh, one hopes that the chopper will be able to make it to the lebong helipad and uh, union home minister amit shah will be able to come here so little bit of uncertainty because of the weather but one still hopes that he would be able to make it but at this point uh, you know there is always uh, you know in election campaigns like these high voltage campaigns uh, both candidates are you know moving around i've spoken to all three candidates in the darjeeling constituency though it seems like uh, a lead for raju bista Uh, what also is very clear is that the other parties are not giving up ground and they're not walking away from the battle in fact the battle will go down to the wire is something that trinamool and other uh, parties are saying that's very interesting uh, sir uh, uh, last time they won by 4 lakh votes this time trinamool and other parties are claiming that the battle will go down to the wire in darjeeling do keep a track 
of what's happening, whether Amit Shah's chopper is able to land finally in Lebong or not. Thank you very much. Now moving to Rajasthan, Barmer, the last city in Thar Desert on the border with Pakistan, now is in the eye of a desert storm. Independent MLA from the area Ravindra Bhatti is now fighting as an independent in the Lok Sabha as well. The election is now a triangular contest with minister from central cabinet Kailash Chaudhary fighting to defend his seat and the Congress fielding former Delhi policewoman Umeda Ram Beniwal. Take a look. On the western front, the last bastion in the Thar Desert is Barmer barely a hundred kilometers from the Pakistan border. Barmer is the country's second largest Lok Sabha constituency spread over 70,000 square kilometers with over 22 lakh voters who live mainly in small villages. But Barmer is now in the eye of a desert storm. Independent MLA from this area, 26-year-old Ravindra Singh Bhatti, is now also fighting the Lok Sabha election. With a huge fan following and an army of volunteers, mainly youth, Ravindra Bhatti threatens to upset the carefully crafted calculations of the Congress and the BJP on the Barmer seat. Independent जो कर सकता है मुझे लगता है कि वो शायद सरकार के अंदर रह के भी वो आदमी नहीं कर सकते निर्दलीय पक्ष और विपक्ष के बीच की एक धुरी होती है और मैं विश्वास के साथ कह सकता हूँ कि जितनी मजबूती से सदन के अंदर निर्दलीय अपनी बात रख सकता है उतनी मजबूती से पक्ष और विपक्ष के लोग भी नहीं रख सकते भाटी has a huge social media following but BJP candidate and central minister Kailash Chaudhary says that won't translate into votes. Chaudhary is himself banking on the Modi magic to see him through. Social media पे अगर चर्चा होने से काम नहीं होता वोट कौन देता वोट तो जनता देती है और ये वोट यहाँ पर जनता देख रहे हो तो मैं यही कहना चाहता हूँ कि वोट सिर्फ एक ही बात जो अभी आप सुन रहे हैं वोट हमारे को मोदी को देना है कई भी कई बार कोई अगर आता है उसको देखने के लिए तो कोई भी व्यक्ति आता है लेकिन वोट तो जनता देगी Barmer is a seat dominated by caste equations. The Rajput and Jat votes here usually split, holding the key to this election. Minorities, OBC and SC voters also play a crucial role in tilting the scales. And the caste factor is what has driven the Congress to choose Umeda Ram Beniwal as its candidate. The former Delhi policeman is known for his mild manners. Umeda Ram recently left Hanuman Beniwal's party, the RLP, to join the Congress. दस साल का मुझे दिल्ली पुलिस बतौर दिल्ली पुलिस कांस्टेबल सेवा का अनुभव है तो मुझे सब पता है कि एक पुलिस कांस्टेबल की क्या परेशानी हो सकती है एक फौजी की क्या समस्या हो सकती है एक मजदूर की क्या समस्या हो सकती है उसके बाद में मैंने बिजनेस भी किया तो एक एज ए बिजनेस जो स्टार्टअप की बात करें तो स्टार्टअप कितना मुश्किल होता है कितना अपने आप को स्ट्रगल करना वो सारी समस्याओं से निकला हुआ हूँ तो मुझे हर नागरिक की क्या समस्या हो सकती है उससे मुझे अच्छी तरीके से पता है और उसका समाधान कैसे कर सकते हैं But in this desert landscape of Barmer, there is one issue that dominates: water. पानी भी समझा है। पानी ऐसे आता ही नहीं है वो नल गाड़ियाँ बुद्धि आए ही नहीं। छोड़ के छोड़ के लप लप पानी आए। वहाँ तो फिर वनु तो कोई होता ही नहीं है। ताका गांव में पानी नहीं आए। कई समस्या है। वन साइड में आए, वन साइड में नहीं आए। वन साइड क्या होता है मुझे? हैंग भी नहीं आते हो, घ the discovery of oil reserves in Barmer has also changed the desert economy. But local people, especially youth, want a bigger share of the pie, more jobs and employment. And hopes now rest on the oil refinery that is coming up in Pachpadra in Barmer. मेन समस्या पानी के यहाँ पर है युवाओं को रोजगार और पानी ये सब दो ही बिल्कुल है सबसे मेन समस्या यही है। But while oil drives the economy in small villages and hamlets, people still struggle to make ends meet. Barmer lives in the shadow of drought. Agriculture is largely dependent on the monsoon. खेती बाड़ी वाला तो घने ही है, बिजी नहीं है कोई। तो कोई करो फिर मजदूरी करो। मजदूर करो सर। अटे जाओ मजदूरी करो। ओना में भाई सेनार बढ़िया जाओ, बढ़ 
600 kilometers from the capital city of Jaipur in the barren landscape of Barmer, there is now a politics of assertion. People want development and jobs, and the emergence of a young leader with no particular political affiliations could polarize politics here. It's turned overnight into a hot seat with the entry of independent candidate Ravindra Singh Bhatti, who's really taken the desert by storm. Now, while the Congress is banking on the caste equation, the BJP is asking for votes, hoping that Modi magic will work for them. But will Ravindra Singh Bhatti manage to convert his social media following into actual votes is the biggest challenge. With camera person Sushil Kumar and Raju Mali in Barmer, Harsha Kumari Singh, NDTV. Staying with some more election news, NDTV's Maria Shakil spoke to top economist Surjit Bhalla about the Lok Sabha elections and what to expect. He predicts BJP could win over five seats in Tamil Nadu and uh, for BJP's 400 par claim, Bhalla says there's a possibility that Bhatia Janta Party could win between 300 to 350 seats. He also says the opposition has not done much and that more jobs were created in the last five years. Listen in. Uh, so, if the BJP has maxed in central India and northern India, so where are these additional 23, 25 or 35 seats coming from? Okay, this is also an important question. The argument, and that also is discussed well in the book. The argument is, okay, look, they maxed out, then isn't it very likely that they will lose some, let alone gain some? Look at the margins. They had very comfortable margins in North India, 30%, 40%, etc. So they can lose some of the margin, but they're not going to lose a seat. It's very unlikely that they will lose a seat. Second, where are they going to gain in North? Now that's a, you know, UP, etc. If you look at the state elections, there is room to grow for the BJP yeah. in North India by looking at the election results of the states. As I said, that the weighted average gain in terms of vote share for the BJP in the state elections is about 5%. That's not small. So therefore, they can. Now, what the BJP also understands, more than I do, more than you do, so they understand it very well, they need to make forays outside of North India. Hmm. And South India is their major, major target. Yes. Karnataka, they are pretty much maxed out. Yes, as 25 far as seats. Yeah. So it's Tamil Nadu is a think, big one. Do you think Tamil Nadu? No, I've, I've been watching as a, as a, as a, as, observer. as a political nut or whatever you want to call it. I've been following the Tamil Nadu election very, very closely. Um, and both from the opposition side as well as from the PM Modi side. And I think, you know, I wouldn't be surprised hmm. if in Tamil Nadu, hmm. of all places, hmm. they gain somewhere between five plus seats, the BJP, from zero. So you're saying Tamil Nadu, there's a possibility of five seats? At least. Five plus? Yes. Five plus in Tamil Nadu, okay. Kerala, and maybe one or two. You're still, you're of the opinion that the BJP is opening its account in Kerala? In Karnataka. Kerala. In Kerala, maybe one. I mean, that, that won't make much difference. Maybe two. You know, it's very hard. Uh, my analysis in this book is not really at the ground level. If I were doing it now, I would do the ground level type of analysis and questions, etc. Time for a quick break on the show. More on the other side. Stay tuned. In our country, we choose our leaders, we decide who is going to be ruling the country uh, and it is something which is both a fantastic right, privilege and we should also see it as our constitutional duty. So this election, I am going to be there and I hope you all will join me in casting your vote too.
Hello, Moto. Motorola, India's best 5G smartphone brand. Hello everyone, I urge each one of you to exercise your right to vote. Your voice matters and all our votes shape our collective future. <laughs> Let us make democracy stronger by going out and exercising our franchise. Jai Hind! Lok Sabha elections, as always, NDTV has its ear to the ground. With the biggest pie of 80 seats, all eyes will be on Uttar Pradesh. Will the Troika ensure the Modi umbrella unites all? It is the first election in Naya Kashmir since the scrapping of Article 370. Will the same number of lotuses bloom in the desert? Welcome back. The Congress Central Election Committee meeting in Delhi has just concluded. Uh, it, it was over Punjab Lok Sabha seats. Congress will be contesting on all 13 Lok Sabha seats in Punjab. The ex-Punjab Chief Minister Chandi has been fielded from Jalandhar. Congress has also announced candidates uh, on all six Lok Sabha seats. Well, uh, we are reporting at this moment that the Congress Election Committee meeting in Delhi has concluded where Punjab has, uh, uh, na where Congress has announced uh, the Lok Sabha election seats in Punjab. They will be contesting in all 13 Lok Sabha seats. Uh, Ex-Punjab uh, CM Channi will be fielded from Jalandhar this time around. Congress has also announced candidates on six Lok Sabha seats. Ashwarya, uh, my colleague, joins me for more on this story. Tell us a little bit about who um, has ha who has been fielded and who missed out this time around. Well, the list for uh, Punjab and Bihar are yet to declare. Uh, it was. Uh, uh, the uh, Central Election Committee meeting of the Congress Party, which concluded at the uh, Congress headquarters uh, under the presence of President of Congress Party, Malika Arjun Kadge, Sonia Gandhi, and other uh, key leaders of the uh, Congress Party. In uh, Bihar, it is being stated that Congress has yet to announce the name of candidates uh, in the uh, seat sharing of. Uh, uh, with the seat sharing formula and nine seats uh, were allotted to them uh, and parties likely to uh, name the candidates from Samastipur, Muzaffar Nagar, Betia, Patan, uh, Patna Saheb, uh, Maharaj Ganj, uh, Sasaram. Uh, on the other side, it is the uh, Punjab uh, CEC, which also concluded today. Remember, uh, the Congress party has already announced six candidates out of 13 Lok Sabha constituencies and seven are remaining. And uh, there was a manthan in the Congress headquarters uh, uh, regarding uh, the declaration of uh, another seven candidates. Remember, it was uh, heavyweight candidates which Congress party earlier announced from Punjab, including uh, former uh, Chief Minister of Punjab, Charanjit Singh Channi, former Aam Aadmi Party MP, uh, Dharamveer Singh Gandhi and others which were in uh, uh, pray and uh, uh, from uh, Chandigarh as well, uh, the, uh, the Congress had announced its candidate as far as Manish Tiwari's uh, name is concerned. Now, for next seven Lok Sabha constituencies in Punjab, mm -hmm. Congress will be declaring its uh, uh, candidate. So, uh, the meeting uh, went on for almost two hours for both the states. And uh, right. in the evening, we are uh, expecting Congress party to come out with a fresh list of candidates for both Punjab and Bihar. Thank you very much, Ashwari, for getting us all those details. We'll, of course, closely track with you 
the names of those candidates. Now, a row has erupted over Tihar Jail's report on Arvind Kejriwal's sugar levels. After Tihar's report, AAP has raised questions. Delhi Health Minister Saurabh Bhadwaj said the sugar level report is random. It is neither fasting nor postperennial. Let's uh, listen into what he had to say. Two bears are two pucks. One pucks is Arvind Kejriwal, the pucks is Amadi Party, the pucks is the pucks that I have been diabetes for 20-22 years. I have been on the insulin for 12 years. The other pucks is the Bharatiya Janta Party and the Tihar Jail. The Bharatiya Janta Party is the Kendra Sarkar, forgive me. The Bharatiya Janta Party is the Kendra Sarkar और तिहाड़ जेल एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन का है वो पक्ष क्या है नहीं साहब इनकी कोई शुगर नहीं बढ़ रही नहीं ये बिल्कुल नॉर्मल है टाइम फॉर अ क्विक ब्रेक ऑन द शो अ स्पेशल इंटरव्यू कमिंग अप ऑन द अदर साइड ऑफ द ब्रेक स्टेट हेलो मोटो मोटोरोला India's best 5G smartphone brand. I do hope all of you are going to go out and cast your vote, and especially the youth of the country. And the youth and the corporate citizens, people who work in our urban centers and uh, companies. You know, we are the, uh, you know, in many ways, we actually are the generation which is going to build the country. So I do hope all of you get out and vote. It is not just our uh, responsibility, but it's also our core participation in building the future country of our dreams. And I am today pledging to vote. Uh, my vote is in Punjab uh, on 1st June. So I'm, I'm pledging here to vote and I do hope all of you do the same. So uh, I'm going to just sign this pledge to vote. This show isn't just about news from the southern states. It's one that looks at the rest of India and the world from a diverse South India point of view. Because NDTV has always taken the southern view seriously. The Southern View with Veera Raghav. Block is holding a mega rally today in Ranchi. Leaders from as many as 14 political parties, including Malikarjun Kharge, Rahul Gandhi, Lalu Prasad Yadav, Farooq Abdullah, Akhilesh Yadav, and Sunita Kejriwal, the wife of Delhi CM Arvind Kejriwal, are likely to join in the opposition India Block's Ulgulan Nyai rally. Led by JMM, the rally will be held in Jharkhand's capital, Ranchi. Listen into these political reactions ahead of the rally as the leaders uh, reached Ranchi. Message was yehi hai ki ye Tana Shahi ke khilaf hume ladai ladenge. Jis tarike se Jan Pratinidhi Chunkar aaye, Himan Suren ji ho, Arvind Kejriwal ji ho, unpe ED, IT, CBI in sab tarike ki jaanch lagakar unko jail mein dalne ka kam kiya hai. Nirdosh logon ko jail mein dal rahe hain kyunki just unki gunha kya hai? 
वो इस केंद्र सरकार की तानाशाही के खिलाफ लड़ रहे हैं तो अगर आपने फेज वन का चुनाव देखा होगा तो उसी से आपको स्पष्ट हो गया होगा कि अब ये प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी का एज अ प्रधानमंत्री आखिरी चुनाव है ये बहुत बड़ी रैली है और मुझे नहीं लगता कि झारखंड में इतनी बड़ी रैली कभी हुई होगी और स्वतः लोग आ रहे हैं इस महारैली में क्योंकि यहाँ पे चूँकि मान्य हेमंत सोरेन जी की बात है और जनता उनके लिए उमड़ पड़ रही है और इंडिया गठबंधन एक साथ है इस रैली की सफलता का हमें पूरा विश्वास है और सभी लोगों को जो मान्य हेमंत सोरेन जी के साथ है जो अन्याय के खिलाफ है वो आज इस रैली में आपको दिखेंगे पूरे देश भर के तमाम नेता आ रहे हैं और झारखंड झुकेगा नहीं इंडिया रुकेगा नहीं ये रैली जो है वो भारत के संविधान को बचाने के लिए भारत के लोकतंत्र को बचाने के लिए तीन बार के चुने हुए मुख्यमंत्री को आपने जेल में डाल दिया अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को उनको इंसुलिन नहीं दे रहे हैं जो लोगों की दवाओं का इंतजाम करते हैं उनको आज आप दवाओं का इंतजाम नहीं कर रहे हैं उनके जीवन के साथ आप खिलवाड़ कर रहे हैं एक झारखंड के निर्वाचित मुख्यमंत्री को आपने उनके पद पर रहते हुए उनको जेल में डाल दिया तो ये जो तानाशाही पूरे देश में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने मोदी जी की सरकार ने कायम कर रखी है उसको उखाड़ने के लिए आज हम सब लोग रांची में इकट्ठा हो रहे हैं More election story now. NDTV's Maria Shakil spoke to top economist Surjit Bhalla about Lok Sabha elections and what to expect. He predicts BJP could win over five seats in Tamil Nadu. And as for BJP's 400 par claim, Bhalla says there's a possibility that they could win between 300 to 350 seats. He also says that the opposition has not done much and that more jobs are were created in the last five years. Listening. not a record breaking election i think many ways if he wins the third election it is a record breaking election record equaling at least and mind you you know around the world and that's a nice little discussion in the book for any leader to win three elections in a row is like a record breaking effort okay so let me come to my last question uh what is in it in this election for the opposition or the india bloc you know what can they do in order to improve or the what forecast? have they done they haven't done much in order to win that's my major complaint if i were in the opposition look there's a lot of discussion which we haven't had time to go into as to the kind of games the false commentary games that the opposition is played in played with oh my god you know the modi promised 20 million jobs a year you can't find that anywhere okay or that employment is a big problem more jobs have been created in the last 5 years right than at any other 5 year period in 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 history the rest of the world is saying india is doing very well and here you are some economists get together and say uh, gdp growth is vastly overstated i mean this is not you know whether the economists are doing it or the opposition is doing it it doesn't help their credibility so i think as an opposition they should have had you know there isn't much they can do other than to be creative we know that bjp is popular or the modi is very very popular they could have come up with something that sticks rather than coming up with a number like you mentioned a cmie unemployment is if bjp is in the range of 330 to 350 then the opposition is not really improving its tally no no it's not congress is going below 2019 number that's a very good question okay and let me put it just like i gave 70% chance that the bjp will get somewhere between 330 and 350 there is better than even chance that the congress alone hath ka chap will be less than what they got in 2019 at least that's what the model says the model says you know and model takes into account everything and nothing if you will it doesn't look at what's happening it's just looking at a long historical 70 year time trend and according to that they should the congress should be getting about 2 percentage point less votes than they got last time so something like 17 and a half percent or so is what the model is saying 
and unless I am given reasons to think that the model will be wrong, I have to stick with the model. So 4th of June, uh, your last word, there is going to be history that will be made in India. That history in the sense of three victories in a row, something we've all grown up with and you know, I was quite alive when, <laughs> when uh, Nehru won the 62 election, but most of this population hasn't seen anything close to it. Another assessment which has been done recently by CSDS is that job and unemployment are major concerns of people in these elections. Yeah. Uh, if job and unemployment are major concerns, then are we to believe that there is a case of unemployment and all those arguments that have been made by you and others in the context of EPFO doesn't really hold? Yeah. Look, <clears throat> there is not, and this is something that is discussed extensively in the book, there's not a single election that I know of, whether in India or anywhere else in the world, where price rise is not an issue of uh, election, where jobs are not an issue of elections. This happens everywhere because what the opposition anywhere in the world wants to show is that, listen, the economy is not doing well. So therefore, what are the two things, you know, you can say GDP growth, etc., but that doesn't appeal to the common voter, right? You say, look, you don't have jobs. Now, who's there to prove that you don't have jobs? And I'll come to that in a minute. So therefore, around the world, politicians say, you know, uh, inflation is too high, there are too few jobs. If you now look at the unemployment rate, exactly what you're referring to, of basically people between the ages of 18 to 29, it is much lower. It is about four percentage points lower than it was in 2019. So therefore, you should get more votes. So how are you saying that unemployment is a problem? And another point I want to make, Mara, is that <clears throat> throughout in my career, I've said that always look at the delta. The delta is shorthand for change. Mm. It's a technical symbol for change. Look at the change. If you look at the change, there are less percentage of people unemployed today than there were in uh, 2019 at the time of the last election. Okay, so let me come back to elections again. And one of the concerns certainly is if, if you say that it's about a person's, uh, you know, overall life, if it has improved, then jobs, unemployment, they are not issues in, for you, according yeah, to you? Yeah, not, not according to me. They are not. That they have, the improvement has been in jobs. Mm -hmm. The improvement has been in inflation, less inflation. So therefore, there's still inflation. There's still unemployment. But that doesn't conform to the delta rule that you look at but, the change. But still, if CSD is saying that, that that is the dominant issue in this election? And therefore, I am saying, ask CSDS, was there ever an election where they said the jobs were not an issue? Was there ever an election? You can look at all the forecasts, all the assessments of every election taking place. Jobs is always a problem. A quick break on the show. Coming up is a special interview with Dr. Jitendra Singh, who is a candidate from Udhampur and he is also the Science and Technology Minister of Government Institute. carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat-trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn... Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us.
हल्ला बल्ला और सब Dr Jitendra Singh is a two time MP from Udhampur near Jammu polling for which took place in the first phase on Friday he's been a giant killer in the past beating the likes of Gulam Nabi Azad from Udhampur in 2014 in 2019 he had an even more decisive win against his main opponent from the Congress Vikram Aditya Singh he's now contested from Udhampur the same seat for the third time Dr Jitendra Singh is also minister in the office of the Prime Minister and India Science and Technology Minister he's also a doctor besides politics he has an abiding interest in science and technology and joins us now dr singh thanks very much uh, for being with us uh, so are you a somewhat thank you. Thank relaxed you, thank leader you, today sir uh, i mean polling is over there's nothing you can do at this stage so are you somewhat more relaxed or are you completely focused on what over the the summer uh, of hot politics which is still upon us no I, i don't know how to answer that uh, vishnu but to be frank uh, in bhartiya janata party you know we work 24 into 7 so once i am uh, uh, free from the polling in my constituency i am now you know engaged somewhere else so it it continues like that but yes of course maybe that uh, personal level of stress is uh, slightly relieved because uh, that is a different kind of a uh, different kind of a Uh, mental sure. situation at that moment in time now sir uh, the prime minister has said uh, quite recently that assembly polls will soon be conducted in jammu and kashmir along with the restoration of statehood in your mind is that the final step in the restoration of normalcy in uh, in uh, jammu and kashmir that you are looking at yeah uh, frankly speaking you know i think uh, after what has been said by prime minister modi there is uh, neither need nor anything to add to that i think that should be taken as a final word in fact uh, that was precisely uh, said by the prime minister when he addressed the rally at udhampur uh, during the campaign and uh, he did of course say that the assembly elections will happen soon and so also the restoration of the statehood and i think that should also address uh, apprehensions which were sought to be raised in certain quarters by certain western interests uh, about government's intentions which were actually unfounded because uh, didn't have any ground because uh, the same reiteration had been made even on the floor of the parliament uh, by the home minister in the past but nevertheless since this is an election time so some of the opposition parties try to create a false uh, narrative which i think uh, is now uh, must be set to rest after what the prime minister has said Dr Singh the prime minister also said in a quote after decades this election is happening without the fear of terrorism separatism stone pelting strikes and cross border terrorism uh, and let us just hope and pray that that remains for the rest of this election process however are you not worried about what's been happening in rajouri punch of late the fact that terrorists from pakistan remain active in that particular area uh, you see we should the 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 situation in jammu and kashmir was uh, actually had two dimensions one of course was the mischief happening at the borders both the loc as well as the ib or the international border and the second was the militancy within uh, which was of course again instigated by the neighbor and also sponsored but as a result of that what was happening is that that has a direct uh, bearing to what the honorable prime minister very rightly said elections were happening for almost three decades one after the other with a very small voting percentage and it was i think a travesty of democracy that we had a vote percentage of just about 10% voter turnout and we would elect the mps and the mlas particularly from kashmir valley and they would go on and go on becoming mps mlas ministers generation after generation and in fact i had uh, dared go to the extent of stating once that they have now cultivated a vested interest in the continuancy of militancy because in the shadow of militancy the shadow of terrorism they can have a closed election with a limited voter turnout which would of course be managed by them and then they would manage their victory uh, election after election now that it is opened up i think this is in the true spirit of democracy that we have huge turnout which also happened in the ddc elections uh, uh, which took place for two or three years back after the abrogation of article 3 we had a huge huge voter turnout even in kashmir valley 
and the situation there has 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 dramatically turned for the better which is i think the most evident uh, uh, proof of that is the fact that we had more than 2 crore tourists visiting kashmir valley now no tourist would risk his family uh, just by an assurance handed out by the government or by a travel agency unless he uh, ascertains through his own sources so that i think is the biggest testimony of the situation having uh, got back to normalcy and that is what has encouraged and emboldened um, the common man in the streets of kashmir valley to come out and to also aspire and yearn for true democracy and to that so extent i think uh, the, we sure. should give credit to prime minister modi that he has made the people of jammu and kashmir realize for the first time what exactly truly the essence of democracy and let's not forget the three tier system of the district uh, councils also were introduced by prime minister modi for the first time in jammu and kashmir after nearly 6 and 7 decades uh, since they had been introduced in the rest of the country dr singh why is the bjp not fielding uh, a candidate from the uh, from the valley <coughs> your the your opponents say that this is a sign of people not having or the bjp not not having been able to reach out to people enough in the valley that's their statement how would you respond <laughs> no frankly speaking we should regardless of what the opposition says of course they would uh, always talk in that uh, genre but i'm 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 not actually accredited or authorized to sp speak on this subject but nevertheless bjp let's not forget is a cadre based party follows a certain discipline uh, follows a certain value system and follows a strategized approach so in any any decision taken by the high command there is a collective consensus based on the inputs from the various uh, 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 factors the various uh, leaders in the top hierarchy and and the the decision finally taken is based on certain strategical approach which sometimes is not to be uh, discussed very openly in public or sometimes it is shared appropriately at the appropriate time so i think whatever decision is taken by the bjp high command is in the best interest of the party and more so in the best interest of the nation as such so it's not a family decision taken or a or a, or a self righteous decision taken uh, every decision taken by the bjp has a very objective approach so whatever is decided would be in the best interest of each one particularly the people of jammu and kashmir uh so further north there have been protests hunger strikes in ladakh earlier this year after leaders of Uh, uh of lay buddhist dominated lay and muslim dominated kargil they came together they've been demanding statehood they want to safeguard the rights of the majority tribal population under the sixth schedule of the constitution it's it's a uh, it's a challenging issue how do you believe these concerns need to be addressed if at all i think i think we must appreciate that the home ministry has been continuously and constantly engaged in dialogue with the representatives of ladakh and which is quite in contrast to what was happening in 2014 um, uh, let us uh, not forget because many of the audience might not have uh, recalled this that the first ever delegation from ladakh which came to the national capital new delhi asking for a unit territory was way back sometime i think in 1948 which met the then prime minister jawaharlal nehru so since then so many governments came and went so many prime minister came and it was only after 2014 when prime minister modi took over that this demand of a union territory for ladakh was addressed and therefore if today also there are certain demands being put across it's because for the first time the people of ladakh have this confidence that there is a government in the center headed by prime minister modi which 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 entertains them with all the sensitivity at its command so i think it should be taken in that spirit uh let's talk a little bit about you know your responsibilities as minister uh, you have been a champion of indian science uh, that's essential obviously for our development now nature in an editorial has said that india has the potential of being a powerhouse in scientific research um you know when we talk about a strong india and the bjp has brought this into the election campaign as well how is scientific innovation a part of it and should we be talking more about this uh you know in the election campaign uh, absolutely absolutely i i believe so and uh, i think we have been trying to do so so also prime minister in his campaign but somehow 
uh, most of the opposition leaders in the other parties are still, you know, uh, uh, they are conditioned to the kind of campaign that happened over the decades. But now time has come to talk about development, to, to talk about the new achievements. I think the biggest now, to sum it up as far as science and technology is concerned, after 2014, Prime Minister Modi has encouraged the use of latest technology in virtual every sector, every development and every department whether it be the railways, whether it be housing, whether it be smart cities, whether it be medicine, digital health, etc., etc. And the biggest achievement why the world is now looking at India as a force to reckon with is that today we are at par with any other country in the world, maybe a step further. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll just give you a simple example. For example, television happened in the USA way back in 1950s and the famous election of uh, US president in 1960 between uh, John Kennedy and uh, Richard Nixon was decided, the, the turning point, in the, in the decisive turning point was the TV debate between the two candidates, which tilted the tables in favor of John Kennedy because of his oratorial skills. And at that point in time, we hardly knew what TV is all about. Over here, TV started happening only in early 70s. That's also uh, in a very small scale and small measure. Today, it is not so. For example, if we are into quantum technology, we are just about five or six nations of the world in that elite league. We are at par with them. If it is space technology, look at our, our ISRO department was set up in 1969 and that is the year which is remembered for America having landed its first human being, Neil Armstrong, on the surface of the moon. But today, our ISRO has landed Chandrayaan on the south pole of the moon before any other country could. So now the world is looking up to us and also because we have the capacity, the ability to work against odds, against all the heterogeneous conditions that confront us by legacy and otherwise. And, uh, and that, that is why. Secondly, when uh, now referring to the article in the nature, yes. many of our natural resources had not been explored sufficiently in the past six, seven decades, which has also happened in the last 10 years. For example, our ocean resources. Even in the BJP manifesto, the, the coastal area has been mentioned too. We have about 12 states and we have huge wealth lying inside the ocean. We, have the, we are the only country which has an ocean named after the country called the Indian Ocean. Huge wealth of minerals, mines, biodiversity. And now we have started that deep sea mission also, which is going to give a huge fillet because that's exclusive to us. Similarly, our Himalayan resources, our aroma resources, the aroma mission, the purple revolution was born from uh, the, the, the hill areas of Jammu and Kashmir, Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh. So these resources are going to add value to the India's economic growth story in the next 10-15 years when we move on towards 2047. So obviously the world has now become conscious of that, that India is now for the first time under Prime Minister Modi is not only conscious of its own resources but is also uh, determined, strategized to make the best use of them. All right, Dr. Jitendra Singh, wonderful speaking to you. Thank you so much for spending some time with us. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, Vishnu. Always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you, sir. The 18th Lok Sabha elections. As always, NDTV has its ear to the ground. With the biggest pie of 80 seats, all eyes will be on Uttar Pradesh. Will the Troika ensure the Modi umbrella unites all? It is the first election in Naya Kashmir since the scrapping of Article 370. Will the same number of lotuses bloom in the desert? Or can Gehlot lend a helping hand to India? The BJP having Max here with the only pillar standing of Chingara Fall. Can Didi once again withstand the second time? Will BJP stay strong in its northeast bastion? Jharu ka jadu or Modi magic? Can Congress gain lost ground in Punjab? Will Revant Reddy be able to increase the Congress strength in Telangana this time? And in Andhra Pradesh, will the Jagannath be able to stop Chandrababu Naidu and Pavan Kalyan? Can BJP win back its only stronghold in the south? Or will it be a Congress consolidation? Can BJP make a dent in the Dravidian den?
biggest carnival of democracy, India's general election. Prime Minister Modi makes a formidable bid for a hat-trick. The opposition is trying to mount a united challenge. And the southern parties are standing their ground. As battle lines are drawn... Join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024. Indian elections, a festival like no other. And NDTV covers elections like no other. When India votes, you can count on us. After five years, we are again getting an opportunity to exercise our right to vote. This is a right which has been earned after a very long and hard struggle by our great leaders. We must not waste this opportunity. I have pledged that I will vote. I have appealed to all my family members and friends to come out and vote for the development of our great nation. right to decide who will run my country for the next five years and for that I need to vote so I pledge to vote and I encourage all my family members all my colleagues at Hyundai Motor India and of course all the citizens of my great country to go ahead and vote vote now and vote forever elections. So. This is NDTV and you're watching NDTV 24-7. Hello, Moto. Mega India Block Rally in Jharkhand. Opposition's show of strength in Rachi. Udav Thakri skips the Mega India Block Rally. Home Minister's poll campaign in Bengal and Bihar. Amit Shah's visit Darjeeling delayed due to bad weather. Triangular contest in Barmer, Congress versus BJP versus independent candidate Unimis Akela Shodri seeks second term. Controversy brims over Kejival's sugar level report by Tihar. Tihar junks up charges, claims no serious concern and insulin issue was not raised by Kejival. Voting is underway in the fourth multi-party parliamentary election in Maldives. 24% voting till 11 a.m. The India Bloc is holding a mega rally today in Rachi. Leaders from 14 political parties including Malik Arjun Kharge, Rahul Gandhi, Lalu Prasad Yadav, Farooq Abdubla, Akhilesh Yadav and Sunita Kejriwal, the wife of Delhi CM Arvind Kejriwal, are present at the India Bloc rally is what we're learning. Uh, remember, uh, the rally is being held by uh, JMM and uh, is being held in Jharkhand's capital, Rachi. Listen in to these political reactions. Uh, but before that, of course, an important addition, Udav Thakri has skipped this particular rally. मैसेज बस यही है कि ये तानाशाही के खिलाफ हमें लड़ाई लड़ेंगे जिस तरीके से जनप्रतिनिधि चुनकर आए हेमंत सुरेन जी हों अरविंद केजीवाल जी हों उन पे ईडी आईटी सीबीआई इन सब तरीके की जांच लगाकर उनको जेल में डालने का काम किया है निर्दोष लोगों को जेल में डाल रहे हैं क्योंकि जस्ट उनके गुनाह क्या है वो इस केंद्र सरकार की तानाशाही के खिलाफ लड़ रहे हैं अगर आपने फेज वन का चुनाव देखा होगा तो उसी से आपको स्पष्ट हो गया होगा कि अब ये प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी का एज अ प्रधानमंत्री आखिरी चुनाव है 
ये बहुत बड़ी रैली है और मुझे नहीं लगता कि झारखंड में इतनी बड़ी रैली कभी हुई होगी और स्वतः लोग आ रहे हैं इस महारैली में क्योंकि यहाँ पे चूँकि मान्य हेमंत सोरेन जी की बात है और जनता उनके लिए उमड़ पड़ रही है और इंडिया गठबंधन एक साथ है इस रैली की सफलता का हमें पूरा विश्वास है और सभी लोगों को जो मान्य हेमंत सोरेन जी के साथ है जो अन्याय के खिलाफ है वो आज इस रैली में आपको दिखेंगे पूरे देश भर के तमाम नेता आ रहे हैं और झारखंड झुकेगा नहीं इंडिया रुकेगा नहीं ये रैली जो है वो भारत के संविधान को बचाने के लिए भारत के लोकतंत्र को बचाने के लिए तीन बार के चुने हुए मुख्यमंत्री को आपने जेल में डाल दिया अरविंद केजरीवाल जी को उनको इंसुलिन नहीं दे रहे हैं जो लोगों की दवाओं का इंतजाम करते हैं उनको आज आप दवाओं का इंतजाम नहीं कर रहे हैं उनके जीवन के साथ आप खिलवाड़ कर रहे हैं एक झारखंड के निर्वाचित मुख्यमंत्री को आपने उनके पद पर रहते हुए उनको जेल में डाल दिया तो ये जो तानाशाही पूरे देश में भारतीय जनता पार्टी की सरकार ने मोदी जी की सरकार ने कायम कर रखी है उसको उखाड़ने के लिए आज हम सब लोग रांची में इकट्ठा हो रहे हैं The criticisms are completely unfounded, and we think it is very wrong for anybody to demand the arrest of a democratically elected chief minister. We have condemned the arrest of Kejriwal, condemned the arrest of of Mr. Soren and Jarkan, and now the Congress asking Modi to arrest uh, Kerala CM. Their credibility of fighting Modi itself. is under 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 cloud so it's up to them to explain ye baat sahi hai ki jharkhand mein india alliance ka ek rally aaj ho rahi hai aur hemant soren ji ki taraf se unki patni behan ji hamari mere se bhi baat ho gayi uddhav thakre saab se bhi baat ho gayi lekin aap dekh rahe ho ki maharashtra mein chunav prachar charam par hai आज भी उद्धव ठाकरे मुंबई से बाहर हैं जा रहे हैं लेकिन हमने ये सोचा है कि हमारे पार्टी की तरफ से कोई ना कोई वहां पहुंच जाए Prabhakar, now we're expecting a big uh, rally in Jharkhand uh, by the India block, but we're also learning that Udav Thakre is going to be campaigning instead and not attending the rally. Prabhakar, if you can hear me. Right, we'll try and get that. Come again, please. Right, we'll try and get that uh, technical difficulty sorted. If Prabhakar, you're able to hear me now, uh, take us through the situation there in Rachi. We're hearing that an India Block rally is uh, uh, just going to start in a couple of minutes. Uh, but of course, Udav Thakre is going to give it a miss as he's going to be campaigning instead. Yeah, exactly, and it's, it's indeed a big, big rally as far as India Alliance is concerned. Uddhav Thakre is giving it a miss. Lalu Prasad Yadav would probably not be attending, and there's no clarity as far as La uh, Rajiv Ga uh, Rahul Gandhi is concerned because he actually also might give it a miss. We are, we have been told that uh, Rahul Gandhi has a rally in Madhya Pradesh, so he actually might not be able to attend this particular rally at Ranchi. But there's no clarity on it as of now. Okay. Malikar Kun Khadge is there. The the the, the Punjab Chief Minister is there. Uh, uh, Sunita. Uh, Kejriwal both the both the wives of the chief minister who are jailed right from uh, Hemant Soren to Arvind Kejriwal both their wives they would be here so it would be a big show of strength and remember the the political campaigning for the Lok Sabha polls is underway so this is very important rally liberal representatives from 14 Akhilesh Yadav would be there Tejshwi Yadav would be there though Lalu Prasad Yadav himself is not there because of the health reasons we all know that so Tejshwi would be representing RJD and uh, it would be indeed a very important rally because uh, the the campaign the election campaign is already underway and they would be for the first time after the election campaign has started they would be sharing a uh, stage here at Ranchi and remember uh, this has been hosted by GMM though the Champai Soren happens to the chief minister so he is the he is the host out there but it's basically uh, Hemant Soren's wife Kalpana who is the de facto host of this entire uh, rally which would be uh, held at at Ranchi today yeah Dr. Prabhakar thank you for bringing us those details from the ground 
Union Home Minister Amit Shah will campaign in Darjeeling today for the BJP MP Raju Bista, who is uh, repeated as the candidate from the seat. Amit Shah is expected to address a rally at the Gorkha Stadium in Lebong near Darjeeling. Remember last time, Raju Bista had won the largest uh, margin in Bengal with him being ahead of the runner-up by more than 4 lakh votes. This time, the TMC has fielded Gopal Lama, a local face, while the Congress has fielded Delhi University professor Dr. Munshi Tamang. Now, we're also uh, learning that uh, uh, Home Minister Amit Shah's chopper has been delayed as of now. Uh, therefore, he hasn't reached uh, uh, Darjeeling yet for the campaign. Uh, but of course, most uh, latest details uh, will be brought to you from the ground where uh, my colleague Saurabh is at. Saurabh, take us through what's the latest on ground. Uh, we're learning that Home Minister he has been delayed uh, due to bad weather, uh, but he is expected to be there at, uh, at uh, uh, the Gorkha Stadium to address the rally. Well, yes, right. well, you know, there's yes, really right. poor visibility a short while ago, but now you can see the sun has just come out, and that's how the you know, weather in the hills are, uh, because obviously, you know, the problem is that sometimes there's clouds, sometimes there's sun, and the visibility was bad, but so now it seems to be clearing up. Uh, there's been no announcement yet on any further update, except to say that the Home Minister will come, that he's waiting for the weather to clear up. Uh, but that's the latest as far as Amitra's uh, arrival here in uh, Darjeeling, is concerned. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about the candidate. In fact, Raju Bista, the BJP candidate who won with a margin of over 4 lakh votes last time, is right now speaking on stage and addressing the gathering. In fact, uh, he's of course speaking in Nepali, the, you know, the lingua franca of the hills. And of course, he's uh, uh, been someone who's uh, been speaking on the TNC. Uh, been someone who's uh, been taking the TNC. In these areas, and the TMC, of course, this time though believes that because they fielded a local, problem, they may also make some are concerned, and therefore, this is something that they would be able to pull off, is what they expect. However, for a lead of four lakh. Right, uh, Red Saurabh there, my colleague, uh, at the uh, at the location, and he of course says that uh, uh, as of now, Raju Pisa is addressing the rally, and uh, the weather seems to be clearing up there in Darjeeling. So we're expecting that the Home Minister will be arriving there soon to campaign as well. The Barbay, the last city in the Thar Desert on the border with Pakistan, is now in the eye of a desert storm. Independent MLA from the area, Ravindra Bhatti, is now fighting as an independent in the Lok Sabha as well. The election is now a triangular contest with the minister from the central cabinet, Kailash Chaudhary, fighting to defend his seat and the Congress fielding former Delhi policeman, Umeda Ram Beniwal. Take a look at this report. On the western front, the last bastion in the Thar Desert is Barmer, barely a hundred kilometers from the Pakistan border. Barmer is the country's second largest Lok Sabha constituency, spread over 70,000 square kilometers, with over 22 lakh voters who live mainly in small villages. But Barmer is now in the eye of a desert storm. Independent MLA from this area, 26-year-old Ravindra Singh Bhatti, is now also fighting the Lok Sabha election. With a huge fan following and an army of volunteers, mainly youth, Ravindra Bhatti threatens to upset the carefully crafted calculations of the Congress and the BJP on the Barmer seat. Independent जो कर सकता है मुझे लगता है कि वो शायद सरकार के अंदर रह के भी वो आदमी नहीं कर सकते निर्दलीय पक्ष और विपक्ष के बीच की एक धुरी होती है और मैं विश्वास के साथ कह सकता हूँ कि जितनी मजबूती से सदन के अंदर निर्दलीय अपनी बात रख सकता है उतनी मजबूती से पक्ष और विपक्ष के लोग भी नहीं रख सकते भाटी हैज ए ह्यूज सोशल मीडिया फॉलोइंग बट बीजेपी कैंडिडेट एंड सेंट्रल मिनिस्टर कैलाश चौधरी सेज दैट वोट ट्रांसलेट इन टू वोट्स Chaudhary is himself banking on the Modi magic to see him through. Social media पे अगर चर्चा होने से काम नहीं होता वोट कौन देता वोट तो जनता देती है और ये वोट यहाँ पर जनता देख रहे हो तो मैं यही कहना चाहता हूँ कि वोट सिर्फ एक ही बात जो अभी आप सुन रहे हैं वोट हमारे को मोदी को देना है कई भी कई बार कोई अगर आता है उसको देखने के लिए तो कोई भी व्यक्ति आता है लेकिन वोट तो जनता देगी Barmer is a seat dominated by caste equations. The Rajput and Jat votes here usually split, holding the key to this election. Minorities, OBC and SC voters also play a crucial role in tilting the scales. 
and the caste factor is what has driven the Congress to choose Umeda Ram Beniwal as its candidate. The former Delhi policeman is known for his mild manners. Umeda Ram recently left Hanuman Beniwal's party, the RLP, to join the Congress. दस साल का मुझे दिल्ली पुलिस बतौर दिल्ली पुलिस कांस्टेबल सेवा का अनुभव है तो मुझे सब पता है कि एक पुलिस कांस्टेबल की क्या परेशानी हो सकती है एक फौजी की क्या समस्या हो सकती है एक मजदूर की क्या समस्या हो सकती है उसके बाद में मैंने बिजनेस भी किया तो एक एज ए बिजनेस जो स्टार्टअप की बात करें तो स्टार्टअप कितना मुश्किल होता है कितना अपने आप को स्ट्रगल करना वो सारी समस्याओं से निकला हुआ हूँ तो मुझे हर नागरिक की क्या समस्या हो सकती है उससे मुझे अच्छी तरीके से पता है और उसका समाधान कैसे कर सकते हैं बट इन दिस डेजर्ट लैंडस्केप ऑफ बार में देर इज वन इशू दैट डोमिनेट वॉटर The discovery of oil reserves in Barmer has also changed the desert economy. But local people, especially youth, want a bigger share of the pie, more jobs and employment. And hopes now rest on the oil refinery that is coming up in Pachpadra in Barmer. मेन समस्या पानी के यहाँ पर है युवाओं को रोजगार और पानी ये सब दो ही बिल्कुल सबसे मेन समस्या यही है But while oil drives the economy in small villages and hamlets, people still struggle to make ends meet. Barmer lives in the shadow of drought. Agriculture is largely dependent on the monsoon. खेती बाड़ी वालों तो घने ही हैं, बिजी नहीं हैं कोई। तो कोई करो फिर मजदूरी करो। मजदूर करो सर। अटे जाओ मजदूरी करो। अनाने भाई सनार बड़ी आ जाओ, बड़ी आ जाओ। दूर हो जाओ बटो। हाँ सर। 600 kilometers from the capital city of Jaipur in the barren landscape of Barmer. There is now a politics of assertion. People want development and jobs, and the emergence of a young leader with no particular political affiliations could polarize politics here. It's turned overnight into a hot seat with the entry of independent candidate Ravindra Singh Bhati, who's really taken the desert by storm. Now, while the Congress is banking on the caste equation, the BJP is asking for votes, hoping that Modi magic will work for them. But will Ravindra Singh Bhati manage to convert his social media following into actual votes is the biggest challenge. With camera person Sushil Kumar and Raju Mali in Barmer, Harsha Kumari Singh, NDTV. Now, as parties prepare for the second phase of the Lok Sabha elections, let's take a look at what's happening across the country. Former Lok Jan Shakti Party leader and Khetar MP Chaudhary Mehboob Ali Khesar joins RGD in the presence of former Bihar Deputy CM Tejas Yadav. Union Defence Minister Rajnath Singh is scheduled to address public rallies in Murshidabad, Malda, Uttar and Darjeeling in West Bengal today. After CM Nitish Kumar's jibe at Lalu Yadav questioning the number of children he has and bringing them to politics, Tejasvi Yadav hits back saying such remarks don't benefit the people of Bihar. UP Deputy CM Keshav Prasad Maurya slammed opposition and said that the Congress is history and that in their place a new opposition consisting of clean people will emerge. Hello everyone. I urge each one of you to exercise your right to vote. Your voice matters and all our votes shape our collective future <laughs> let us make democracy stronger by going out and exercising our franchise jai hind go present a debate has many facets perhaps no one right answer left right and center conversations that get to the core of the debate
Some people say the metaverse will only be virtual. One day this lecture hall will be made of gold. And driverless cars would be trapped in intersections. But even in this maze of the future, you can't wish away health. It's time to become more resilient. Ten years of Banega Swast India, we have grown and achieved so many milestones. And now I have a plan to beat the urgency, to stop breathing with difficulty, to relieve getting choked with inactivity. Energize our government, our environment, our society, and ourselves. Everyone, everywhere, every day. Now, Rao has erupted over Tihar Jail's report on Arvind Kejriwal's sugar levels. After Tihar's report, the Amami Party has raised questions. Delhi Health Minister Saurabh Barzwaj said the sugar level report is random and that it neither fasting or non-fasting. Uh, and uh, Tihar authorities had responded to Amami Party's charges as well. Uh, the Amami Party has accused the jail authorities of denying insulin to Kejriwal as well. Tihar says that uh, online consultations with AIMS doctors had taken place and that Kejriwal didn't mention insulin and said that there's no serious concern over his health. Listen in to what the Aam Army Party had to say. Pure desh hi nahi, puri dunia, kyunki aaj bohat saare international media ke saathhi bhi ye dekh rahe hain kis tarikhe se chune huye mukhya mantri ki hatya ki saadish kendra sarkar kar sakti hai. Ye tihaad jail ke DG ne kal, yani ki 20 April ko एम्स को लिखा है और कहा है कि हमको एक डायबिटोलॉजिस्ट एक शुगर या डायबिटीज के स्पेशलिस्ट को दे दिया जाए आज भारतीय जनता पार्टी की केंद्र सरकार सबके सामने एक्सपोज हो गई but I have my colleague Ashwarya joining us with more details. Ashwarya, now at this point, as the Amarmi party hits out at Tihar Jail's uh, report, uh, take us through exactly what is said. In fact, Tihar is now saying that there is no immediate concern over Kejriwal's health. Well, certainly, and this entire episode erupted after the Enforcement Directorate informed the Rouse Avenue Court that uh, Arvind Kejriwal is having mango sweets and uh, uh, having uh, tea with sugar inside the hard prison, after which it was uh, uh, Arvind Kejriwal counsels who stated that uh, this is not as per his diet. But now, uh, you know, uh, letters after letters, claims after counterclaims being exchanged between the Aam Aadmi Party and the sources in the Tihar prison, clearly Aam Aadmi the party had been claiming that there is a conspiracy to kill Arvind Kejriwal inside Tehar prison. Although now the report that had been sought earlier by the LG from Tehar prison and also uh, by the court had come out in which it has been stated by Tehar prison that there was no need of Arvind Kejriwal taking insulin and uh, uh, having a high uh, diabetes because uh, there were uh, regular consultations with medical experts being done inside Tehar prison as well and his diabetes. Uh, were constant. These were clear, uh, 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 clearly uh, was mentioned in the Tehar uh, jail report. In fact, it was Aam Aadmi Party which later, we, later went on to say right. that Sunita Kejriwal approached Tehar prison right, uh, and asked for Stay on with us, Ashwarya. Sorry to interrupt you doctors. there. Uh, we have Atushi uh, speaking to the media. Let's listen in. All right, uh, we'll try and get that back for you of Atishri speaking to the media. But uh, Ashwarya, like you were saying, the Amarmi party has time and again uh, questioned why insulin was not given to Kejriwal. And an interesting point made by Tihar there was that neither did the doctors nor Kejriwal mention the need for insulin as uh, his sugar levels were normal as what the jail has been saying. 
Well, sources in the Tihar prison categorically stating that when Arvind Kejriwal was lodged inside Tihar prison, it was not uh, stated by Arvind Kejriwal that he needs insulin at this point of time. Neither he uh, stated that uh, he was uh, uh, having insulin. In fact, uh, the sources in the Tihar prison also stated that it was uh, uh, Arvind Kejriwal which was taking a long time back uh, insulin, and uh, after the consultations with one of the doctors. Uh, uh, in Telangana, the insulin was stopped and uh, now when uh, yesterday it was uh, requested by Director General of the Art Prison by Sunita Kejriwal, wife of Arvind Kejriwal, that uh, special experts from AIMS should be consulting Arvind Kejriwal. The, uh, the consultation was done by Arvind Kejriwal through video conferencing inside the Art Prison by one of the senior special doctor and in that consultation it has come out that Arvind Kejriwal does not require any insulin. In fact, regular medicines of uh, diabetes, what he is taking can uh, uh, continue to go on. Uh, in, in interestingly, it has been also mentioned in this video uh, conferencing by uh, the special uh, doctors of the of uh, AIMS uh, who, who got connected with Arvind Kejriwal for almost 40 minutes via video conferencing that uh, uh, he should have. Uh, uh, the same diet that uh, he, that has been prescribed by the doctors of Arvind Kejriwal earlier, which he had submitted to Tihar prison as well. So, uh, on one side, it is Aam Aadmi Party who has been saying that uh, under the behest of central government, it is Tihar prison authorities which is not giving him insulin. We right. all know for the fact that Arvind Kejriwal is highly diabetic uh, patient and he needs special prescriptions and insulin. So, on right. the other side, Tihar prison clearly neglecting the entire claims and stating that insulin is not required this time and this is after the consultation of senior doctors of the AIMS. Right. Uh, on that point, uh, Ashwarya, thank you for bringing us those updates. Let's also listen in to what Atishi had to say. Jho Tihar Prashasan ki kal ki chikhi hai, usne Tihar Prashasan ka, LG sahab ka, Bharti Janta Party ke saare jhoot ka padda fash kar diya hai. Itne din se woh keh rahe hai ki ji sab thik hai, डॉक्टर उन्हें देख रहे हैं उनका शुगर लेवल हम मॉनिटर कर रहे हैं भाई आपके पास तो डायबिटीज का डॉक्टर भी नहीं है अरविंद केजरीवाल जी एक तारीख से तिहाड़ जेल में हैं और एक तारीख से 20 तारीख तक आपके पास कोई डायबिटीज का स्पेशलिस्ट ही नहीं है तो आप कैसे कोर्ट में कह रहे हैं कि उनको इंसुलिन की जरूरत नहीं है आप कैसे कोर्ट में कह रहे हैं कि उनकी तबीयत ठीक-ठाक है तो तिहाड़ प्रशासन की कल की चिट्ठी ने Shifting focus now, visit to Hyderabad is incomplete without shopping at Charminar's Lard Bazaar to buy the Lark Bangles. These have recently earned a GI tag, the 17th product from Hyderabad to get the tag. Take a look at this report. These are the very famous Lark Bangles of Hyderabad. Anyone who visits Hyderabad goes to the Lard Bazaar near the Charminar and buys these Lark Bangles. And uh, very recently, this got the GI tag. This is Amit and he along with his family over several generations has been making these lakh bangles and they are the livelihood option but uh, it has not been very profitable for families like these and very recently uh, GI tag was got for these uh, bangles made in Hyderabad specifically and uh, these lakh which is uh, got from resin is beaten over fire and then uh, crystals and beads are uh, put over it and uh, then market it. Uh, Subhajit Saha is someone who is a GI agent and helped uh, in getting a logo designed for this so that the original can be identified and uh, at least 6,000 families of artisans are dependent on this and getting a GI tag will hopefully be able to make their livelihood better and make the product known more internationally. We'll continue tracking these stories for you for now, short break. As citizens of this great nation, we have the power to shape its future. And one of the most crucial ways we can do that is by casting our vote. It's not just a right for every citizen, it's a responsibility. A responsibility to ourselves, to our communities, and to our country. So, I urge all of you to exercise your right to vote, I always ensure that I fulfill this duty to our country.
in our country we choose our leaders we decide who is going to be ruling the country uh, and it is something this is both a fantastic right privilege and we should also see it as our constitutional duty so this election i am going to be there and i hope you all will join me in casting your vote too का हल्ला बल्ला और सबसे शानदार कवरेज सिर्फ एनडी टीवी पर द बिगेस्ट कार्निवल ऑफ डेमोक्रेसी इंडिया जनरल इलेक्शन प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी मेक्स अ फॉर्मिडेबल बेट फॉर अ हैट्रिक द ऑपोजिशन इज ट्राइंग टू माउंट अ यूनाइटेड चैलेंज एंड द सदर्न पार्टीज are standing their ground as battle lines are drawn join us on an exciting journey on the road to 2024 indian elections a festival like no other and ndtv covers elections like no other when india votes you can count on us Hello everyone. I urge each one of you to exercise your right to vote. Your voice matters and all our votes shape our collective future. <laughs> Let us make democracy stronger by going out and exercising our franchise. Jai Hind. The world's largest electoral exercise has begun and someone who wears multiple hats from being a sophologist to an economist and also uh, someone who has been extremely provocative in his uh, predictions of elections is joining us here this is the new book which has been written by Dr Surjit Bhalla uh, along with Abhinav uh, Modaram uh, how we vote so he is talking about india per se not the world because uh, more than 60% of the world is voting so congratulations on this book martin wolf says that of course you are both original and provocative they are uh, it's it's deeply opinionated but you're also some uh, one person economist sophologist who has relied heavily on research and data uh, you have been making predictions of all elections and you have got all of it right uh, so when i started reading this book dr bhalla i went to the second last chapter to uh, you know satisfy my own uh, inquisitiveness about indian elections so tell us how is india voting 